So, before we get to our quick recap and commence today's adventures, we start the same way we do every day, Pinky. Being an idiot? Shenanigans. Well, I mean, we've already gotten that part out of the way. We're good there. I pet this rat. He is a very nice rat. I appreciate him. <laughs> Smashing time. But thank you to all of our sponsors, all the supporters of the Two Perception Show. Paizo, first and foremost, not only for obviously, you know, literally directly sponsoring us, we're, we're here on their channel mm. playing their game with their adventure. With their <laughs> level three fighter. It's Paizo <laughs> all the way down. Dude, Sirenscape. I can't wait to bully that level three fighter. <laughs> Such a oh bad... look, he has a holy adventure. <laughs> you Sirenscape. You you were the one who originally who pointed out. He doesn't look like he's super magical or anything. He looks like a like a level three fighter. He does just kind of like look like a guy. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. He does not look. Oh my god, his shield has spikes on it. Like what you would oh, expect. Oh, he to might face be level five. As like a <laughs> double slice. The, <laughs> the main antagonist of like the penultimate arc of the entire one to twenty Wait, adventure. Is, is He's his, gonna shield bash you for like eighty his, damage. Is his armor? I mean, is he his, probably is. Yeah. <laughs> is his armor like really like? Is it? What? But Sirenscape, so, uh, who produces all of our soundboards, our background sound. They have a. Seemingly bottomless repository of various effects that can be kit bashed together because every time I go in there to make a new sound set for something, I find something new and cool that I want to shove into basically everything. Making sound sets is an art. It is a very precise and complicated one because I'm terrible at volume balancing, is really just the issue that I have all the way down. Baleful to Shriek was the greatest freaking sound bite I ever found in there. And it is no, it's still the number one. Machine Gun Golem Fist is pretty close. Machine Gun Golem Fist is, is gonna be like S tier for our yeah. you know, as long as we're here, just because it's it's, it's, it's deep it. lore at this point. But of course also, we need to have a lot of dice to play these tabletop games. And Norse Foundry is far and away the best provider that we've found. Filling our table with glorious, chonky, metal and gemstone dice code two perception gives you 10 percent off of quite literally everything on their website fancy expensive dice and accessories included everybody anyone loves anyone who gets a malachite i guarantee you that is not you cannot no we doubt they, they are a the, partner we can't no guarantee literally legally cannot guarantee the things that are not true i guarantee it rolls 20s because there's a one in 20 chance it can do that no guarantees there's a guarantee that if he rolls it... <laughs> yeah, I've already rolled it once today, and it landed on a 20. But that was off screen, so I don't get to keep it. Has so. anyone ever told you that you're the average American and you're why I don't watch television? <laughs> oh. Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh. No. no. I, I was going to call him the walking embodiment of selection bias. It but wasn't okay. the bird yes. I expected, but perhaps it was the one that we needed. There, buddy. <laughs> no, that'd be a will save. Last yeah. week... Crush my soul. <laughs> <laughs> the last couple weeks uh, that we've been working here. We've been making our way into Katapesh, the capital city of Katapesh. It's kind of got a New York, New York thing going on. Uh -huh. uh, to stand against the Scarlet Triad and to stop Etrix Tregal and whatever the heck he's doing once and for all. We are slowly learning bits and pieces of his plan. I can't. We have a working theory. I can't take him seriously because I think of him as Treagle the Seagull. That was really random. That was random, dude. <laughs> That's why I think of him in my head. I picture him like... I really hope he has a flight me. rune on his armor. I really hope he has a flight rune. You continue. I'm sorry. What? Why? Because his name is Treagle and it sounds like Seagull. I mean, my brain does things like that sometimes. I can kind of understand, but... Yeah. Well, like I, I'm pretty sure most words actually rhyme with a lot of other words. It's not uncommon, really. I know, but in this Orange. game, he could really be a bird, and that's what makes it so funny. Just because Severin exists doesn't mean that, like... <sighs> it's okay. We're good. But now that we're here, we uh, are not wholly stupid, you know, all the time. Marching directly into the headquarters of the Scarlet Triad, a massive, powerful, and well-respected organization in Katapesh is going to end badly for probably everybody involved, and we don't really want to fight the entire city of Katapesh. We don't? And so, we need um, to re rescind their official protection. We need to convince the Council of Guilds, convening in a little over two weeks now, 
to vote down the Scarlet Triad as an official member, to recall the shield that the Pact Masters of Catapesh have extended for them. And so far, we've made some decent steps on that. We have literally saved the kidnapped Guildmaster of the Jewelers Guild in the city. So, you know, that's one off the list that Ooh. almost certainly is going to assist us in whatever political endeavors we may need. That only leaves the Aspis Consortium, the Carpenters Guild, the Farmers Union, the Fleshmongers Federation, the Fraternal Order of the Ample, the Gladiators Guild, the Guild of Fakers and Butchers, the Guild of Sweepers and Carters, the Imperial Union of Breeders, the League of Peshmongers, the League of Upright Barristers, the Order of Alchemists and Potion Makers, and the Poison Makers Guild. So, can you say that again? That, that, yeah, the Aspis Consortium, the Carpenters Guild, the Farmers Union. <laughs> I feel like that was a 90s commercial listing off the side effects. <laughs> the Carpenters Guild cannot give you anything. <laughs> but. All We've started to learn a bit. We've started to lay some framework here. We've started to make some connections. We have some uh, helpful assets within the city. And last week, we wanted to go get a little bit of a barometer of what exactly the Gladiators Guild had going on and found it is, well, very much what it says on the on the tin. It's exactly what you expect it to be. We took it with a rectal thermometer. But we have made a pretty spectacular name for ourselves. And as we start off this week, you are returning Holy victorious from only a couple rounds of, is this how we die? Um, <laughs> I was perfect. I mean, that's how fine. all fights go. I, I had a rough start, but Especially I finished it. It's a testament to the how much, or how spectacularly done the balancing of Pathfinder 2nd Edition is, which is just, not something I've ever experienced in the Refugation League 20 system before, that we're level 16 and fights still like make sense. Yeah. And, yeah. Like can be We were terrified. Threatening. And you can start for a couple of rounds like, oh no. Yeah, everybody else <laughs> oh, is terrified. No. I'm Listen, like, that's me Hold every on. round. I'm gonna make this log disguise as me do backflips while I stab this thing. I yeah, mean, so you were terrified. <laughs> she she is not afraid because he realizes that all he has to do is crouch and then the monster eats everyone else at the table. Exactly. Listen, <laughs> you were you terrified. All but I guaranteed care. to be the last person eaten. Exactly. By the giant silicon. I'm having a good time. But you have come back, you have won uh, a sizable purse as well as a collection of contributions from some of the disenfranchised members of the Gladiators Guild. Which is uh, immediately getting reinvested. In alcohol. Day. And at this point it would be mid-afternoon, perhaps around 3 p.m. after your, your waiting time, you sign up, you're fighting the arena and managing everything afterwards. There's not really enough day left to, to, to set up and enact anything major, uh, any kind of appointments with any other value, trying to really make any progress with any of the guilds uh, would certainly be things that would almost be guaranteed to roll over to the following day at this point. Uh, would you be doing anything before heading back to Zager's estate? No. Well, I think we were gonna just like, I mean, we were just gonna take the take the take the gladiators out for like a celebratory, you know. Taking out the lads. Taking out I the mean, lads. I know you said you wanted to take that money and reinvest it for a celebration. I wasn't sure if you meant like you wanted to like organize some kind of event, or you literally were gonna take the boys out to town. Both. <laughs> Both. Probably. Well, I mean, primarily, I think it was like reinvest, like basically get these guys on our side because now we was like oh wow you guys are the badasses who came and killed the monster but now it's like no no no, we're one I of mean, you guys we're getting involved marshall plans on carrying the keg on each shoulder and just walking around with it and then just that's also gonna happen over pouring over drinks for the boys as we go party. in addition to the uh, the purse that you were granted by the gladiators guild for your victory you got <clears> like 500 gold total in assorted coinage from the gladiators that they put together in a uh, to repay we are for, uh, not gonna spend all of that i was gonna say i was like there's we're there's gonna spend like that, that's what I was getting at. Is like there is no. Yeah. I don't know what kind of a rager you would have to throw uh, <laughs> to spend five hundred gold. Do you have any afternoon. idea? Do you have yeah. any idea how easily I could do that? With these guys a party? like eight gladiators. It's the absolute. It's in the all fairness, I'm pretty sure Marshall can eat slash drink I think more in, than his villain. In Catapesh, <laughs> we could find a way to blow it all. Drugs. Most expensive tavern there is. <laughs> oh, you talked to this Wasn't man where I was going, but, but okay. Is, like, if you're going for the super top, like the top shelf vodka and the fine dining, like, is that where you're taking the gladiators? No. Because I think they want to go where he wants to go. Where gonna... he wants to go probably isn't terribly expensive. A uh, keg is like one gold. Yeah, we're probably going like, to go through like, 20 gold at 
the most. Yeah, you will not spend taking care a, of all a of reasonable them. amount of this. But, and that's even like 20 gold for nine in the town is a, an incredible amount of money. They I gotta say again, keg. it's easy at this point to lose track mm, of I mean, how much money you have. No, they one, each a get bunch their of own bananas is can $20. Take dollars. Yeah. How much? One banana, what could it cost? Five dollars? <laughs> I mean, one keg is like a travel mug for Marshall. You know this, right? But I mean, this <laughs> the, the purse that you guys got from the fight, 1,500 gold. The reason that people would agree to these fights, to, to fight things like the Dune Shaker, that they have nearly no chance of, be, of surviving, much less defeating, is because that's like set for life. 1,500 gold pieces, like you immediately go home, you and your family retire relatively comfortably, like you are set for the rest of your days. Your kids are set for most of theirs. Like these are inordinate amounts of money as you have worked your way up your incredible monster slaying and town saving career. Like 500 gold is an obscene amount of money. I'm wearing that on my hand right now. 20 gold. Well, yeah, but like, I mean, of the things that you could legitimately blow $50 million on in real life, uh, yeah. a single piece of jewelry is also in that category, to be fair. So, like, that's. See? I mean, See, in, there in are luxuries, and then there are. We're taking the boys out for dinner. I mean, effectively, <laughs> now that we think about that, really, considering like the magical weapons, armors, and runes that we're all wearing, we're basically wearing like the equivalent of like magical power armor in wealth. I mean, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're wrong. Because you have what? You at this point have got like plus two. I mean, especially my every plus two Resilient greater armor, striking, plus, plus two, two resilient anti magic. Like your your sword in the fantasy RPG where you do like a major side quest for someone and you have like the grand family heirloom murder sword yeah. that carries you for eight levels. That's just all of your weapons. That's yeah. that's what they are at this point. Yeah. These are what become the family heirlooms yeah, in the future. That's true. Grandma yeah. Roshin's demon slaying <laughs> holy avenger that like can cleave a pit fiend in two in a single blow. Maybe it was exaggerated a little bit by the writer. Yeah, possibly. yeah, I know. Like her grandson has it over known. his mantelpiece. I feel bad Perhaps. for any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for anyone that inherits Big Red. Well, I've got the left hand, so it doesn't really matter. I remember dwarfs. I am definitely not going for a night on the town. I am staying for 10 minutes to be polite, and I am beelighting it back to Zader's because there is no way I want to stay, watch, or see what is about to happen in that bar. I mean, Roisin doesn't really have much of a choice. because No, no, know. Roisin is fine. I mean, Roisin can leave whenever she wants. They can't stop her. But... <laughs> the only person they have a chance I mean, of stopping no, is that. You guys just killed the Dune Shaker. Nobody is going to attempt to stop you. <laughs> but... I mean, Marshall might literally just carry you around with, with a keg and just, you know, have a party with you. Just you put really you... seem to no. think that Roisin is really easy to pick up. She's wearing the rock armor. No, we just... I we am literally you. wearing the rock armor. If anyone could break the rock armor roll, Marshall could totally <laughs> do it. I might be able to do it. No. No. Okay. Resme, perhaps excusing herself a bit earlier, uh, I imagine the rest of you would <laughs> make your way back to Zader's estate sometime closer to sundown after a very excitable and high energy I afternoon of food and drink. Just no. bar hopping. I bar have hopping. to watch the children because mom and dad went home. Machine's still there. Yeah, Machine's still there. Yeah, I was about to oh, say. I thought you'd be leaving early. No. Not no. as early as she I did. No. She I'm like going home to take. Boys. I'm taking a bubble bath. This is you not what people go drink. with her life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you, though, uh, resident, when you arrive back at Xander's estate, there would be nobody there, which is not out of the ordinary, of course. I mean, Zader does not spend the entire day just like sitting in her house waiting for you to bring tidings. Oh, really? She, uh, she has a life. She has, Wait. She has things that she does. It's a work day. Like, she's probably, you but, know, out doing But Resume her job. was ready to walk in the door and go, I have titles. Alchemizing things. Alchemizing. And the rest of the party uh, would return only about half an hour before sundown, still before Zeta herself had to find, I imagine, at this point, an impeccably cleaned and uh, cleaned up and repaired resume from the wearing a robe the sand with a giant bug battle that had happened earlier this afternoon it would be near impossible to tell that just a few hours ago um she had been getting slammed into the dirt by a crab spider the size of a literal building story of my life <laughs> kind of yes you sign up to be an adventure this is what happens yeah i mean still better than three-headed centipede thing 
<laughs> Did you guys have a nice time? Because I had an amazing bubble bath. Zader knows what she's about when it comes to this alchemy salts. Another thing it's easy to lose sight of as a player character. You know, alchemy does things other than make bombs and healing potions. <laughs> it makes slumber wine. It has... <laughs> it's ma- it has made it my has skin much, so soft. Much more mundane uses, which are probably the vast majority mm-hmm. of what alchemists are actually doing, is things like that. Resme's skin smells amazing. I cannot even imagine, like, a pretty rich alchemist clearly just based on her resources in Catapesh. I, I that it clearly enjoys the finer things to some extent. She's I got literally bath salts. cannot imagine what the bathroom is. Dude, like. she's like, got resume went to town. There's a whole setup just for making your own bath salt. So you have a different variety every single time. Yeah, you she, got like a bubble bath with sentient bubbles. Yeah, I mean, like, like to she, put on a freaking show for you in the tub. Like I mean, Zader has to exfoliate her hair, so. And that, that's like 30 snakes. And so I'm sure like, each I mean, it's snake be pretty has high duty stuff. Super I mean, sugar scrub. It's like spot on. I mean, I'm pretty sure she had to come up with some form of soap that was strong enough to get rid of most of the stench of her margin. <sighs> Actually, Resme has been giving some thought as to how you would curl that hair. Like, you would need, like, individual, like, little, like, things to, like, hold the snakes down so that they would hold their curl. <laughs> I don't think you could... I don't think that's a thing you get to do when you're a Medusa. But, I just... but Resme's been giving it some thought. I think if you try the snakes... Oh, you. that's Resme <laughs> thinking about so, it. Except her. No, what, what Resme, really... Resme is daydreaming about the concept of a Medusa with her hair in curlers. What you're really Little trying to say like, eh. is that <laughs> her bathroom is on the higher scale of things. Probably. Yes. I hate you. But... <laughs> I'm glad it took him that long to catch it. No, it didn't. I was just I was <laughs> mentally debating for a few seconds. Like, do I just move on? <laughs> just don't acknowledge it. Uh, Don't give him the satisfaction. Late. I couldn't do it. The I'm satisfaction not, is you let me say. Not it. powerful. Well, I can't preemptively prevent you. Exactly. From I have already parts. won. Oh my god, I'm losing. You need to get like a mute button for each of our mics individually. <laughs> so whenever you don't trust us, you can just hit it. And... Mine would just be off constantly. <laughs> <laughs> He's not rock. So what we do is I just turn his microphone off before I even go live. He just, never, <laughs> he just thinks. It's like the kid with the steering wheel. Yep. <laughs> he I just has no I'm, idea. He's not contributing. We always kind of look at him like, and not I'm not even on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when you guys walk in the door, Resme has a, a notepad out with a charcoal, and she's sketching a, a picture of Zader with like little like comfy like curlers where that her snakes can like kind of go to sleep in. Like she's trying to like create something for it. Um, and I thought this is... you said you stopped drinking before you came back here. <laughs> no, I just had the most lovely bath, and now I'm doing some thinking. What was in that bath? Yeah. <laughs> what was it in that bath? Yes, I can clearly see. It wasn't for where your brain is. Marshall kind of busts down the door with the cake in hand. Hey, guys, how's it going? I didn't lock it. It wasn't even closed. It's not even our door. He walks in, <laughs> kicks the open door down. <laughs> <laughs> he closes the door just so he can kick it open. Exactly. <laughs> How's it going? Pops open the, the, the keg and starts drinking it. <sighs> What's up? Uh, what are we doing? Well, you're we... taking a bath. Well, Eva, What is a bath? Did you forget already? Uh, I'll let you handle it, Russ. I... To be fair, I've had... No, I had to shoot... Did she help me? I did it last time. I'm not he listens to you. No, he does not. I had 27 of these earlier this evening, so sorry. Oh, you're sleeping <laughs> in the. You're sleeping outside then. Um, <laughs> jokes on you. I like sleeping outside. Oh, it's even better. I like it when you sleep outside. Right. Well, we had a good talk with the gladiators, and um, well, I suppose what we should probably go on a serve. If we actually want to try and take down this uh, corrupt plant of the gladiators guild, we actually should probably see if we could actually call her out. Can you imagine if we took her out in the ring? Oh. I just remembered something, actually, that is kind of important. Uh, after a few briskies with Lifter, he says I might be able to have a one-on-one talk with uh, old one-eyed, the old uh, guildmaster. Oh, perfect. He actually probably knows a bit more of the inner workings of everything. Yeah. I just, you know... It get, certainly saved us. Saved work, us uh, you know, work my charm and, you know... Oh, tra- Marshall, <laughs> I'm sure you do such a fine job. I'm, I'm, gonna tr- re- I'm Here's trying- my secret. I'm gonna wrestle him. I'm trying to decide who's going to be the better liars, the Upright Barristers or the Poison Guild. Oh, the Poison Guild seems like very honest chaps. Well, if It's very straightforward work. If you're uh, thinking straight up this seat, likely not the Poison Guild. That is not what they uh, 
what they do. They do not have to lie, they hide. Well, Trishik, I'm going to leave them to you then. Well, I have not found them. It's likely we will have to wait. That brings into the question to other guilds. What's the plan this going forward? Well, I think we should uh, split up, uh, play to our strengths, and see uh, what kind of headway we can make. Mm, I agree. Uh, particularly uh, seeing as how we'd actually have to cover a great deal of ground before uh, the two weeks are up. Um, we could actually split out. I was actually thinking of talk of dealing with the farmers. Uh, they're having some trouble with the triad protect and protections, and uh, we might be able to go ahead and convince them that uh, they might start hire, should hire some others. I think uh, the ladies of the evening and the barristers guild would be best left with me. Well, if you want to catch a man and lie, it would not be a bad idea for me to come along too. Oh, good idea. Fair enough. To tell you the truth, I'd rather have you with me anyway. Fair enough. Mm. Hey, I always feel safer when you're around. It oh. is probably not a good idea. Well, there is nothing that we've gotten into that did not dissolve into a dangerous situation. Well, that's why I want you with me. I mean, I think one, that's a good idea. Well, Raz, why don't you come with me for the farmers? And we can also hit the breeders while we're over on that side of town. Um, what, they just because he's a rat, you're taking him to the farmers and the breeders? That seems like a bit of an insult. Well, it's because I know the common folk. Oh. See? Because what? Raz knows the common folk. He's good at talking to people. Good save, thank you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, no, uh, the breeders, Marshall, remember, he heard about the breeders' guild. They really enjoy a good haggle. I think between you and me, we actually might be able to talk some circles around them. Earn their respect that way, you know. We can try. It doesn't hurt to try. There is a uh, carpenter's guild, yes. Oh, we don't care about them. They're losers. We still have to at least reach out. I think it wouldn't be a bad the idea carpentry in this town is actually beautiful. Oh, okay, I guess. You and I are the crafters. But in all fairness, I'm going to not promise about, you know, Okay. At this point, as you discuss around, as Rasheen's going through her list, the, uh, the front door opens again, and you see uh, done up again in simple but not uh, overly ornate and gaudy finery. Uh, almost royal purple hood drawn up around her face, as usual, obscuring most of her features. Uh, the red tint of her glasses underneath still visible. Zader quietly slips in the door. Uh, before taking a gilded sash that she has over her head and pulling the hood down to the rest of you in the dining room. Oh, hello. I never want to leave your bathroom. I still can't get over an instinctual fear. It is not, <laughs> I suppose, unimaginable. I take no offense at I'll, the very least. Here. Please don't. If you just see me jump, that's probably why. Marshall. That's she, the plan. She reached out to take whatever you're handing here. The group of you, I assume, have made quite an impression upon the city today. Oh, yeah. Oh, that reminds me. He picks out a piece of the meat from the spider crab and feeds it to Dingus. And she's like, as you hold it out, she just kind of turns her head away from you. <laughs> so <laughs> Dingus rips around as the snake kind of almost goes across the front of her mouth. And Gives her a little mustache. Pulls back. <laughs> what have you handed her? It's, uh, the, it, it's the solution to how to, like, gently lock up her snakes into curlers when she doesn't that's want them I, around. That's what I thought it was. And she just kind of looks down at it for a second, and then looks back up to you for a moment, but then turns to Trishik instead. Uh, assuming that the group of you are the heroes of Breach Hill that are such the talk of the town. That yep. would be correct. We have a contract it and everything. Is... I guess technically. She just well, kind of puts this thing you had. It's a good... <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I signed us up as. It's a good spit in the face of the triad. It is an impressive one. With everything I have heard of your exploits so far, of course, I am not terribly surprised to hear of your competence in combat. There is no way you could have accomplished what you have without such skills. But such a public display against the gladiator skilled, no less. This perhaps affords us an opportunity. What kind of opportunity? It would be one to wipe the smug smile off of that lady's face. Sandy Claus. To my understanding, the Gladiator's Guild is one that is quite tight with the Scarlet Triad. I do not imagine that there is much you can present or say to sway them in just the short time of a few weeks. But, given 
the fame that you have established today. This gives you some weight, some pull. If you are confident, you could play their own game and beat them at it. Ooh. Oh, that's easy. Like an in-the-ring coup d'etat. Exactly. Oh, I'd love it. Wouldn't it look spectacular? Roshin, are you thinking what, what I'm thinking? What do you think that meant? I'm sorry, I haven't what? followed Nothing. the specifics of their workings, but uh, to my understanding, this is much what this uh, Bichez figure did to the previous guildmaster. Ooh, then it'd be poetic too. Oh, and it has, there's pre- precedent there, so it's actually it's actually official. Such a public de- uh, display of her defeat, especially if it is a particularly thorough thrashing, would do much to undermine her reputation. Does she have to be breathing when we are finished? I don't imagine so. But I would leave that to your discretion, I suppose. Well, but if you think to... her better as a puppet or as an example. Well, it's less... I'm just going to point at Marshall. He is a big X. He it tends to go all the way through whatever he hits. He doesn't know how to hold back. Including what appears to be insects near the size of this very manor. He can't even spell restraint. Believe me, I've tried to teach him. He can't spell X. Well, if the chef <laughs> is dead... There's two X's, right? Then they would need a replacement. Yeah. And given your current standing with the guild, and given your current population with... Uh, uh, Pop- popularity with the people of Katapesh... You may well have a good amount of say in who that is. Somebody useful to us to vote against the Scarlet Triad is one more guild on our side. Well, if uh, the old guild master is interested in taking up his old position again, perhaps he'd be uh, amenable to doing what we say if we put him there. I, mean, I don't know how the Gladiator's Guild does things, but if he is suitably thankful, perhaps the easiest alternative. Well, I'm supposed to have uh, breakfast with him in the morning. <laughs> Perhaps you can ask him that. That's the plan. Uh, Our other plan was to divide and conquer. Uh, We're going to have to do a lot of work with a lot of the guilds in a very short period of time. And we all have different areas of expertise, things we excel at. So we were thinking of splitting them up and seeing what we could do individually. Almost certainly wise. Outside of the gladiators guild, a show of force that the combined group of you could present is not going to have any intrinsic value. Stick to your strengths and play to them well, and perhaps together you can make headway on numerous fronts simultaneously. It, in fact, would be all but necessary if we are to hope to succeed in the coming weeks. Raz, you have the list, right? The list of what? The list of all the guilds. No. Can you make a list of all the guilds so we can check them off as we go? Let's be organized. Try to copy my list. And just copy Roshin's list. A much neater, fancier handwriting. And pass it back over to Resume. Uh, Resume checks off the Jewelers Guild. Like three checks. There's already two checks on it. It may be wise to establish a wide base of more blue collar support as it is. Mm. Some of these guilds have high standings. The Aspis Consortium, the Imperial Union of Breeders, believe it or not. The Paternal Order, Order of the Anvil, some of the bigger consortiums and players in Katapesh may be more difficult to contact or have sway with as you remain an unknown entity. It may be easier to sweep perhaps the lower echelons of the society. The street sweepers and the dunk carters, perhaps the bakers and butchers. Yeah. Even the upright barristers, as seriously as they take themselves, are little more than a rung on the ladder as far as we are concerned now. Hmm. That said, an operation of the scale we are hoping to do here is beyond my usual purview. I deal in information and potions. It's not typically political loot. Uh, we have some expertise in that area. I have none. Perhaps I have some expertise in that area. We'll stick to the lower rungs on, the la- on that ladder you're talking about. The bakers and butchers sounds like they're fun. You're hungry, ass. I'm really confused about whether or not the breeders are talking about, like, cows and horses or actual people. 
I always assumed it was cows and horses, but actually... of course. Why would there be a guild of breeding people? Yes, generally people can take care of that themselves. I think that well, is generally quite frowned upon. That would be... It's... Do they frown upon it's, something in Catapesh? It's Catapesh. They don't... Catapesh is not the lawless wasteland I think you take it to be. I didn't say it was lawless. I just said it had no morals. They, they, they frown upon taking slaves inside the city. I mean, I thought like a breeder's guild would be a place where you set up marriages. That restriction is quite simply for uh, ease of legislature. It is difficult to uh, become near impossible to manage things when rivals of commerce or politics were attempting to take each other and slave within the walls. (coughs) The Zephyr Guard found it harder and harder to draw lines. Well, we certainly wouldn't want the poor Zephyr Guard to have a hard time keeping track of their corrupt masters, now would Hmm. we? Not to mistake me, perhaps a city of more vices than some within the inner seas, of course, but it is simply a different line drawn in the sand. We all have them. There are many who would affront to a guild simply organized around the breeding and keeping of livestock, especially those who exist only for slaughter. Why is that line so different? You're, you're speaking nonsense, Zader, but you've been in this city long enough. I, sh- I shouldn't be judging <laughs> you for you it. Could you say that if I myself were to walk through the gates of most cities that you have been through to the west or to the north, that I would be welcomed? You'd be killed on sight. Is that a fact? Not only that, yeah. but if you Look, walk into a lot of... point at Dingus. He's just kind of sticking up off to the side. Well, like I admit he's not very well behaved, but I don't see why I would require oh, you to put I think snakes, he's a cutie pie. Snakes generally have a perceived, like, I don't know, fear amongst most people, and the fact that she is a monster. Where else well, within Avistan have you seen a more diverse tapestry of people, of ancestries and races in the streets of Katapesh? Nowhere. All are welcomed here. And well, few uh, feel the need to hide themselves. All his money is welcomed uh, here. Let's not, let's not mince words. Are there any civilizations that run differently? Yes, yes, there are. Hmm. There is a pretty big diversity to be found in the, uh, the uh, pirate communities, actually. That's true. Pirates are very well known for their inclusivity. Truth be told, Zater, I think actually if you walked into Breach Hill, um, you'd find it a bit more welcoming than you might assume. Uh, I'd say that most of it might be due to uh, hospitality and the other half ignorance, but I think you'd have a good time of it, and significantly less slavery there. Save what little I have heard of it from the group of you, I am regrettably unfamiliar with these settlements, but... You'd probably find it quite boring, but the people are good. I mean, worst case, you could always just adventure with us. I find myself quite comfortable here. No, these are far from complaints. So... I think I'll start with the Upright Barristers, and maybe, hmm, what else is on the list? Well, it honestly wouldn't be too difficult for me to go talk to the Pesh Guild. Oh yes, that's right up your alley, isn't it? (laughs) And I will note that the League of Peshmongers is uh, somewhat known for their apolitical stances. I would think you would perhaps find it difficult to convince them to take a stand one way or the other. I do not imagine it will be easy to bring them to our side, but they are not committed to the defense of the triad either. It is quite possible that in the vote we seek to rally, they may abstain. Well, what about uh, actually all those drugs and poisons that the triad are into? Surely that might be stepping on their toes a bit, unless it's strictly Pesh that they're all about. They, well, the nation is named for a reason. Well, rather, Pesh is named as it is for a reason. It is big business within the city, and they deal almost exclusively in the plant. The Order of Alchemists would be a good place. Order of Alchemists, I of course have some contacts with, I can help you. Uh, Many of them, especially those of renown, take themselves quite seriously. The ability to demonstrate understanding or even competency own art would serve you well. Uh, that's not going to be a problem. Not a problem at all. Oh, and you're a baroness. Don't go ahead and drop your title. That actually that's would right. go ahead and perk the oh ears Oh my gosh, you're right. I own land. With the upright barristers, that would give you a solid footing to stand on. Oh, excellent. They think themselves masters of rhetoric, of the written and spoken word. Uh, the ability to prove yourself similarly competent or perhaps even outwit or embarrass some of them in front of the others uh, would give you leverage with them. I was, like about fun. To, I was about to say, I know Raz is good at reading and writing and fancy words and stuff, so we might be covered on that. I'm just thinking about Baked Goods right now. 
Don't worry, we'll stop by the bakers after we talk to the farmers, The guild of bakers and butchers are perhaps some of the simplest you may find within the city. I don't imagine you will need much more than a direct approach of mundane diplomacy to sway them. Unless their opinions prove surprisingly stronger than I suspect. Well, I was also going to bring up, besides talking to old One-Eye later tomorrow, uh, I was going to try and mosey on over to the Carpenter's Guild, uh, I believe was the other game plan, and see if I could do something with that. You don't keep talking about this Carpenter's Guild. Have I forgotten to write it down? Well, there certainly is one within the city of Katavesh. They are one of the 13 upon the council. I just must be so used to actually ignoring I mean, carpenters. I don't I really never actually thought it occurred to me to write it down. It's actually not on my list anywhere. In all fairness, I don't really want to anymore. deal Raz, with the carpenters. No, you copied it for mine. I no, it's, I copied your list. The carpenters you will find are similarly simple folk. They do their jobs, they do them well, and they have a suitable pride in their work as many of the craftsmen throughout the city do. Hmm. Again, displaying some competence with work of hand and tools may assist you there, but they are quite set in their ways. That said, I, mean, I would I've... not begrudge you for overlooking them. They are simple carpenters. I mean, I made my axe, so that should show for something. It may perhaps be much easier to simply strong arm them than to try to parlay for their support directly. I think we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with the Anvilers Guild. The Anvilers Guild, admittedly, is one that, surprisingly, I may know the least of. They are large. There is a great variety of use for metal within Katapesh. It is not simply weapons and armors, as many of you adventurer types may believe. Perhaps, perhaps um, our recent experiences in, uh, in the Dwarven Kingdoms might help us there, though. We had quite a few contacts and, and groups that we know of from them. Oh, goodness gracious, if anyone could actually, you could actually get by the entire society just by talking about how great you are at putting things together. The entire society ran on it. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in my life. I know very little of dwarves and very little of the fraternal order or their stance on well, things. Well, was pretty much all about the smithing. And stone carving. Surprisingly, they are somewhat an uncommon sight within Katapesh. They are, I, I suppose, present enough in some numbers, but... Their weapons might be more common than you would think, though. It is rare I come across one in the lines of my business. Oh, wouldn't it be fascinating if one of those Anvilar Guild weapons were found in Katapesh with I still had my symbol on it? Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I would oh, have to write a story about it. It'd be it. like finding a penny that you had lost that one time and it shows up again. It'd just be like, oh, look at that, there it is. I forgot about that, honestly. <laughs> So I'm sure the Anvilers Guild actually tried to scrub all those off if they actually True. found them all. Well, it seems like you have a fair framework to begin your plans to sway more of the guilds in the coming days. Yes, I think we are making a good start. I think we should go to sleep, get up, eat a really big breakfast, and get out there. I would only truly recommend that you do not squander your limelight. You are showing in the arena today is the talk of the town. It is not near every citizen of Katapesh's lips. Oh, okay. But I guess we're going to stay up late. Every day. Well, well, it will pass quickly. It will depend on you. Uh, if you can actually go ahead and uh, meet up with the uh, those old one eye the farmer gladiator, uh, guild master, he might be able to give us some uh, advice oh. on how best to leverage that. Oh, don't worry. I've got that covered. I'll leave it in your very capable hands. Ah -ha. I, for one, have had... Uh, Quite an exhausting day, and I believe that I will retire a bit early this evening. If you have any more uh, questions or seek any more of my guidance, I will meet with you in the morning if you need. Well, right. I mean, I was going to ask Dengus if he wanted any more meat. Please do not feed the hare. It does not need its own food. It... But he's adorable. I want to give him traits for being Her a good head. Is <laughs> actively like because he's tugging. I'm glad that, it can, that this can bring joy at least to one of us. <laughs> and I hope that your success you have found today continues as you treat with the other guilds within the city. Good night, heroes. Good night, show. I guess maybe I should go make an appearance at some sort of place where the barristers might show up, at least to make myself known, get myself announced at a party, uh, make a perambulation of the area, see if I pick up any attention. I can probably help with that. I, I thought you might. Right. Well, it seems I, like have, I have friends in high places in the city, apparently. 
Oh, yes, that's right. That's where you got that invitation from. Yeah. That was fun. Should have been there. So, without much more that could be accomplished this evening, uh, mm-hmm. with your plans sketched out largely enough, and having been gloriously victorious in your first adventures in the Gladiators Guild arenas, you retire for the evening to rest well from what was a pretty trying battle for people not named Rashik. Uh, <laughs> and Fraz was also realistically pretty fine. It took 17 damage. That's it. That's I all. What, I don't know what you're talking about. I had a good time. Realistically, only two of us had a really bad time. It was yeah, yeah, largely th- just Marshall and Resume getting obliterated by a giant crab. Yeah, the three of us were just like, that's a big thing. I'm glad it's not attacking me. While well, Roshin was kind of like, no, you're supposed to hit me. <laughs> the but next morning. But you're shiny. It doesn't like you. Man. The ne- He is gigantic, and then she was running while he was only defending with Tremor Sense. Was my logic. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, uh, I mean I'm, I'm very good at distractions. The following morning. They give you awaken and go through your daily preparations, readying your spells, taking your breakfasts, organizing. Uh, it sounds to me like we're going to be doing some downtime activities this day. We are. So where is everybody headed? Marshall, we know you are going to go meet with uh, Old One Eye. Yep. Going to have uh, breakfast with him. Yeah, Toddy One Eye and meet up with the Gladiators Guild, and you're going to spend your day, uh, I imagine, trying to make some headway there. Yep. What are you after, Sheik? Unless someone else needs me, I'm going to go make a buddy buddy with the Pesh Guild. Off to the leak of Pesh Mongers we go. And. I'm going to go have some fun with the Barristers are after you, fortifying are myself. Are you going to help her, Rez? Yeah, I'm going to go tag along. And if you, if you two go, uh, as you are going to influence these guilds, you, if two of you or more want to go to the same place, you can aid each other or you can make wholly independent checks. You are not like attached at the hip. You, you can both go talk to the same guild. Uh, in fact, there is so much ground to cover here that that might be damn near necessary at some point. Uh, how about you, Rasheen? Uh, Rasheen's going to go to the Farmer's Guild because uh, they're kind of salt of the earth, down to earth people, and it seems that they're already having problems with the triad, so it yeah, seems they... like that might be an easy domino to push. That was a very large, sparkly hook dangled in front of you when you walked into the city for the first time. That was like, so. Mm. Oh. <laughs> that probably merits a follow up. <laughs> So we'll go back the other way around then. Raz and Resme, as you make your way out to the League of Upright Barristers, uh, you would find them to be largely, I figure, what you would expect. They are a relatively, uh, well, it's a lot of what it says on the tent. It is interestingly that this is the almost union of most of the legislative and legal arm of the city is both sides. You have prosecutors, you have defense. They are all, it's, it's not like separated at all. This this whole union is all pretty much the, the legal and law, and law team of Katapesh. And of I course. call it the bar for short. Yeah. So as, as much as you, you know, Michael and this expecting, well, these guys are, interestingly enough, almost enemies amongst themselves most of the time professionally, as if there is any kind of major legal battle there's certainly going to be two members of the League of Upright Barristers that are against each other. But they're both getting paid. They're both get- getting, getting paid. paid. And they're both making a great name for the guild itself. They're both uh, on a good display. And when they are not currently in a court standing against each other, they are very surprisingly friendly. Uh, more amicable than you would perhaps expect the League of Lawyers to be. Uh, But as you come in and start making your first little forays into probing around with the League of Upright Barristers, they perhaps due to the nature of their profession, do not immediately seem to jump at the opportunity to really take any kind of political stance or to make enemies of any of the guilds. Uh, They, perhaps more than any other, sort of need everybody to like them at least well enough. So if they were going to assist you in standing against the Scarlet Triad, they would need to be confident and certain that the Scarlet Triad was a business that was not going to survive much longer, and they wouldn't suffer any major consequences. So as you go to influence them, it's the first time I think we find that directly you just attempt to influence somebody. You still have your bonus from the groundwork you've laid, the connections you've made, Rez. Uh, are you going to aid each other, or are you going to work together? Um, is it? Is it are those, um, those are the same. Or aid each other, or work, oh, uh, work independently. Sorry. Do you want to aid me, or do you want to work independently? 
from what information you got from Zader, as well as a day of fraternizing with some of the uh, some of the lawyers in town, visiting the guild hall, and just yeah, I mean, you're not going in there. Hey, you want to help us take down a Scarlet Dryad? But like, you know, kind well, of rubbing out as you can. You get the feeling that as lawyers, the two easiest ways that you would be able to uh, kind of sway them to your cause would be deception and society. You don't I, have to do like a discovery rolls or anything. This you're spending an entire downtime. I think to work if we can cover more groundwork. I think we can cover more groundwork if we kind of split, split up. Split up. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Rez, what tech are you to... And you can try things outside of those. I'm just telling you uh, what seemed like the most... What seemed to you on the surface is what might be the most just, effective approach. I'm just going to use society. Society? Yeah, my ability to dictate. Addiction. They do two things. Yeah. Um, they uh, thoroughly understand the workings of society and they thoroughly misrepresent the workings of society to their benefit. <laughs> it's like you get society and you get deception. It's, it's like me and statistics. Oh my God. It's like you and statistics, Lord except without us. the thorough understanding. It's a lot of <laughs> exactly. posing hypothetical defenses and lawyer stuff and how you would go about um, for a total of a, my math is getting worse every single week, I swear. Um, 45. 45? Critical failure. Mm, what a shame. <laughs> it critically succeeds so hard, I think it actually wraps around to a critical failure. Um, wow. Start talking about I start, Damn. I start mentioning you, ideas that are out of their league. They have yeah, no you, you idea. You start talking contract talking law, the guy's like, like, I'm a like, family like, lawyer. Some of these people feel a little emasculated by the rat that seems to understand this better planer, than they have to the like, law. Like, that's what it is. Like, court cases from other planes. Just. And honestly, within Catapash, with the ama with the amount of various uh, genie ancestries that are present in the city, like that's, you would actually find several people that have had to go to the city of Brass for court cases, uh, for <laughs> things that they were prosecuting either on behalf of Catapash or on behalf of their own guild or another major guild in the city against an Afridi, who. <laughs> I'll the sue you in the city of Brass. Hold the jurisdiction card on it. We're like, screw you guys. I'm going back to the planet of fire. And he's like, well, I'm going to come sue you in your hometown. <laughs> that is a Definitely very bold thing to do. <laughs> These. I'm an Afridi. I'm going to sue you. Are you sure about that? But I will come to the plane of fire to sue you. I will send a subpoena to the city of Brass. Would Whoa. not be beyond. There is no, you no know, escaping the long arm of the law, my friend. And they are happy to do it. City of Brass is lawful, right? I believe so. I mean, at least they would honor the subpoena. I mean, it is like the major settlement in the plane of fire. It's literally the only settlement in the plane of fire I know off the top of my head. Or any of the elemental planes, which is why it's the one I picked um, <laughs> to start making stuff up. I don't know a lot about the elemental planes. In my like Galarian Pathfinder knowledge, the elemental planes, and even beyond that, most of the non-material planes is a pretty big hole. I mean, you could I, have made it up. I would have believed you. I did, but <laughs> except the city. If I like, I put a th that's what you do. You put the thing, the one thing you know, and then just make up some other crap. And we're good to go. Because yeah. my extra planar knowledge is limited at best. It is lawful evil. Is lawful evil? That a sounds according about right. According to uh, archives. Yeah. I assume that that's that's. Well, our, sounds. You're close with the arc. <laughs> Arcadus. Oh, I thought you did archives and <laughs> ethics no. there real quick. Fair enough. Um, resume. Um. So resume. Um before she goes in there, is going to uh, chug a uh, greater cognitive mutagen. Does that last 24 hours? No, oh, I can't use it if it doesn't last 24 hours? This is a downtime hours? day. It needs like, like eight hours. If it doesn't have an eight hour duration, it's not going to help you with the downtime activity. Okay, got it. Um, in that case, um, Resume is going to... Resume is going to use deception. Fake it till you make it. Um, Interesting. It's not even like lying to them. No, it's again, it, sort of like playing the game. And not even in the way you think. Do do um, it? It's more like she is going to drop hints that she has more weapons against the triad and has done more and made more inroads against them already than and she already has. <laughs> um, around the way you're hoping to get later. Exactly. That's um, fair. So... Smart. She's going to drop hints about the Jewelers Guild and what we already did there, about the Gladiators Guild, essentially making the point that our group has might 
we have intelligence, we have everything we need to we make have the this other successful. Four stats. Notably, <laughs> so, in, you're, so you're basically saying you have the bigger stick. Until you mention the events of the Gladiators Guild, uh, the League of Upright Barristers actually would would be some of the few in the city that do not immediately recognize you as like the heroes of Breach Hill that had conquered over Dune Shaker yesterday. Uh -huh. We're like, wait, I heard about that. That was you guys? And they don't kind of, they don't really believe it, you know, seeing as the two people that you sent, they maybe don't <laughs> immediately believe that. <laughs> oh, um, maybe they think you're like the PR team for the heroes of Breach Hill. Pretty much. But roll me your deception. No, because at any point she could hand one of them the rock and then they could talk to me. Like here, yeah. Take a, the call to, talk to my buddy Trishi. Yeah, I'll tell you. The one who you couldn't right. see for most of the fight. <laughs> Not most. I mean, you only disappeared. If, you didn't. I spent more time invisible were, than I was visible. Yeah, but you had your dummy most of the time. Yeah, like the you, know that. you were only like gone for the time when you were going up the post. Which you you was made literally a really a convincing round. stuffed lizard head on top of the log. It so. literally pandered to the crowd effectively. So I mean, yep. like it worked. That'll be a forty. Uh, forty will be a regular success. And with the day the two of you spend, uh, you, Rez, make a truly impressive impression upon the league here. Most of these people, as you as you kind of explain uh, the things, these these various bits and bobs of knowledge that you've picked up throughout your life as a bard, that you do have a comprehensive understanding of their profession and perhaps even of the workings of Catapesh. I mean, you are uh, not... Y Yosoki, you are in the city that you are the least unrecognizable. Uh, you would be recognizable to some extent as a desert rat. You are from here. This is something you can express to these people. You, you can do truly convince them that you have a solid understanding of how the city operates and how things work. And along with uh, Resme's support and interjections and uh, claims of things that may already be in motion, while the League is somewhat uninterested in taking a hard political stance. They also have a vested interest, interest in being on the correct side of a schism should the city split with schism. one of its major organizations. Sorry, and this schism myself. that might be coming here I'm is a schism sure. they do not want to misstep across. The schism. Um, <laughs> the two, Please stop. Please the two stop. of you are actually pretty confident that after literally a single one single day and one critical success later, that you have the League of Upright Barristers on your side. Woo. If when the Council of Guilds comes, you have the support you claim to have, they have no reason to stand with the Scarlet Triad and ally with the Singing Ship. Guys, it's really simple. We tell everyone else that we already have everyone else's stuff on their side, and we just make sure we got one that's, of them, so it just kind of, it that's cascades. That's how then one person fact checks and the whole thing falls apart doesn't matter nobody dude no one fact how, checks what have you looked at anything in the last two years nobody fact checks anything <laughs> you can just say whatever you want more importantly <laughs> have you been to the internet since 2019 <laughs> you just put uh you just no. put, just put clap emojis between your words and you immediately are right <laughs> it's very <laughs> Oh, I love so it. you two, honestly, like that was that was it. The critical success and a success, you have the League of Upright Barristers on your side. They take themselves very seriously, and I mean, law is an important part of any major civilization. But in the grand scheme of things, they're not a huge player. Doesn't uh, matter. We have to check them off the list. Yeah, when, uh, but I mean, like that's what I mean. It's not particularly hard to do so. They mm -hmm. don't have a ton of weight in the city of Catapesh because while law is a fairly expense-heavy profession in real life. Uh, the general economic level has not changed in the transition to the fantasy world of Galarian where you're carrying around a sword that is worth more than the net worth of most towns. So, Such is life. You know, the factor isn't as impressive <laughs> <laughs> compared to things like that. Uh, so, Roshin, you are off to go meet with the farmers. Exactly right. And uh, as you head to speak with them, the Farmers' Union... While they, they have their main hall, they, they do have a guild hall located within the town, but most of its members obviously are not only not from within the city's walls, they're not actually part of Catapesh itself. Uh, there is not really good farmable ground immediately around Catapesh just because there's not enough space even outside the city walls uh, that isn't regulated or that they can, they can control properly, that they can get the funding to purchase. 
most of what they handle is produce and farming abroad throughout the nation of Katapesh and the supply lines that run them to the city and its heart of the coast. But notably, this union also has its fingers beyond the nation's borders, as a lot of what they transport comes into the ports of the city itself. And they have connections and control a large amount of land and a large amount of crop across the seas. So they're like broke, they're like commodity brokers. Largely, yes. It huh. is not as blue collar the actual farmers as you would expect, though most of the membership of the union itself is a lot of actual farmers, but it's not just Katapesha. You have Assyrian, you have Kadirin, you even have some, you even have some southern Talbot farms hmm. that are a part of this large conglomerate. Uh, what is your approach here? So, um, Roshin knows that they're having trouble with the triad. Apparently the triad, like, is paying them for protection or something like that. Kind of probably the other way around, but yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the other way around, yeah. Um, so, um, Roshin is going to try to set it up a little bit. Um, she's, she's decently silver-tongued. She could probably talk her way in all right, but she'd actually like to set it up a bit first, um, where she's going to go and try to find the triad who are supposed to be guarding places for the farmers union and she's going to try to intimidate them away Fair enough. it's like go take a walk if i see you here again i'm taking your head off your shoulders kind of thing well as you uh, as you look around a bit trying to make these connections um it is wheel day and most of the farmers guilds major shipments and their major transports come through on fire days uh so there would not immediately available be any of the normal Scarlet contacts that they might have, the mercenary groups that they contract out, whether they're directly Scarlet Triad or you know, groups that are just controlled by them, uh, they'll be available. You would, however, in their absence, have much freer tongues yeah, amongst yeah. the Farmers Union, and in their current state of disenfranchisement, they are much more glad to speak of the problems they've been having. Uh, so we find no one to directly intimidate this day, you would learn a little bit more about the specifics of what's happening. Uh, and after a few introductions, you, perhaps alone in the group here, would actually be invited into the guild hall, the guild hall itself for a, dire a direct meeting with the head of the uh, farmer's union. Lovely. You would get day one to go meet with uh, Lalia Khalid, who is the woman who or runs the entire organization top down. And she would explain to you a few things about these specifics of how these things have been going on. She minces no words with you. It is a direct protection racket that the Scarlet Triad have forced upon the Farmer's Guild. A few months back, the Guild protested against the ever-increasing tithes that the Triad were taking for them for this, uh, for this uh, protection. And somewhat coincidentally, a few pesh fields they controlled in the north, uh, more north up in the nation just happened to burn to the ground. It's unfortunate what happens when you don't have the Scarlet trying to protect you. Miss mm. uh, Khalid here could see through this ruse directly for what it is. I mean, it wasn't intended to be subtle. It was intended to send a message. Mm -hmm. But their problem is the profit of the union their income and their liquidity have decreased drastically uh, due to these increased fees that they're paying. And worst of all, things have been becoming worse. Not only are they extorting us further and further for greater and greater amounts of gold, cutting desperately into the profits we need to continue running our operations across the sea and in neighboring nations, things that Katapesh itself, the city, relies on if we were to lose our coastal connections, we would not be the only ones suffering. But the Scarlet Triad has no particular loyalty to the city itself, beyond the coin and service it can provide. They would suffer nothing for starvation coming within its walls. And this is a problem for some reason the Pact Masters cannot see past. Look, you. this may come surprise as a surprise to you. What... I may hear coming across my desk here, running a union of farmers and shipment lanes. But I have heard whispers that the Triad are having their own problems of fields. <laughs> Am I mistaken that. in expecting that you similarly may be the torch to their pesh fields? 
you know what? This actually, um, I didn't think I'd really get a chance to do this in Catapesh, but um, yeah, no, here we are. Um, out comes that bag, and uh, we're going to pour just a pile of Scarlet Triad manacles onto the floor. And then Miss Khalid <laughs> would visibly just a grin split her face <laughs> as this goes down. The fire's been burning in their Pesh field. Something fierce across the land here. Now you got to put them all <laughs> back. Pick them back up again. That I, happens off screen. And this is in her office, just the two of you. She would even dismiss the secretary she usually has and the, uh, the various pages he has attending to her, expecting perhaps the conversation to go this direction. Ms. Khalid seems to know an impressive amount of things that are going on, which again, not the first time that's confronted you here in Katapesh. How many manacles do we have now? A lot. Too many. Because I know you've been keeping count. He's Over got a number. He'll give you a number right here. Over. 41. Fantastic. That's not a small pile. A small pile. Could be bigger. I suspect... We'll be bigger. <laughs> I suspect that the agents of the Scarlet Triad would have no qualms with robbing our union and its members outright, were they not already doing so through their tides and their protections. Look, you have come to Katapesh to see them laid low, and truth be told, I would have nothing but joy to see much the same. But it would be unwise of me to stand against them publicly without confidence that you would be able to end whatever power they have within this city and this nation. I offer you a chance to prove yourself to me. Recently, twice now, large shipments that have come through have been lost. We have heard tales spreading of some fire-breathing demons of some kind. You would perhaps be wiser to talk uh, to the survivors of the attacks themselves. Hmm. The Scarlet Triad has claimed these to be one-off experiences, that there are many such things throughout the desert sands of the nation. A claim that is not entirely wrong, I suppose. But given the timing, and the location being similar enough, twice is enough, I would not, I would not see a third. There is a shipment coming down from Assyria to the north. They will arrive uh, late in the eve on fire day. You could ride in the morning to meet them escort them through much of the area that I, that these previous attacks have occurred. If they arrive safely, perhaps it is the will of the gods, that I aid you. But your mere presence may be enough to secure them. But if, as I suspect, you run afoul of this fire-breathing beast, and you are able to protect them, you have shown me your power. I lay it low. It would also be quite embarrassing that uh, the, tri the a shipment that was supposed to be protected by the Triad uh, was saved by an outsider. Knowledge that would become very much public in the days after. Oh, I very public. You. I'd scream it from the rooftops myself, although I don't suppose I'll have to. Now, I can put you in contact if you have no further obligations to stay in, if you wish it, with some of the members of our union that were present that escaped these beasts. I'd yes, be able please. to give you some degree of a description, some more direct information that may help you to prepare. You're too kind. The winds are shifting in Katapesh, and the Triad's time is very limited. It is something that has been long since overdue here within the city, I can assure you. Many may play their cards closer to the chest, they may be more tight-lipped, but I think you will find there are many other guilds who will be equally happy to see their downfall. It's the way they operate. It all comes back around to get to you in the end. I had hoped, of course, pulling the strings of such an overarching business as the Farmers Union of Katapesh, that I would never find myself so directly opposed and so personally invested in the downfall of fellow guilds of the city. Naive days early in my career, I assure you. Hmm. Even though they hold a guild seat here, they're not of this city. You said it's yourself. They have no connection to it, and much like the Aspis Consortium, they only operate here for coin. They'll bleed you dry if you let them. But don't worry, we won't let that happen. If you show me you have the means to put an end to it, I'll gladly support you. Sounds fantastic. Please let me see uh, your guild members who actually were survivors. And she would take you through to a couple of meetings. You would hear, well, the testimony of panicked farmers. <laughs> yeah. Which is not the most reliable narrator you could come to. Uh, but you would put 
a couple of recurring themes together. Bring unto me your screaming peasants. The <laughs> creatures that attack the caravan seem to be the size of an elephant. They were large, but nothing near as towering as the dune shaker that you had fought in the arena the previous day. They spit fire. Some described it as the breath of a dragon. Some described it as wet gobs of lava propelled across their wagons. Some described it as a what seemed akin to an explosion, a burning blast as far as they could tell in near all directions. There's no real consistency to the specific tale of what this thing could do. Uh, but if you uh, let's see, uh, you do get a little bit of a description of the thing itself. Uh, it looked to be like a beetle. Its carapace ridged with fine spikes and all of its chitin charred black. The, the creature itself seemed to have fire glowing from within and from vents, almost like geysers mounted along its body. Steam and smoke vented. Hmm. Oh, so it's a torkoal. Kind <laughs> of sounds like a torkoal. <laughs> <laughs> This is why you can't have nice things. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That was the first thing I thought of. Except you, get that, some, uh, you get some tales uh, of how rapidly it was able to lay an entire caravan low. Of course, none of these were wholly unguarded, uh, though many of the mercenaries that have been provided by the Scarlet Triad simply fled from the beasts as it arrived rather than raising sword against it. Uh, and you learn that the, both of the attacks occurred shortly after the camp, the, the caravan had stopped and set up camp for the night. So near waning dusk, both accounts tell you the creature erupted from beneath the ground near adjacent to the caravan uh, so that they had no chance to see it arriving from a distance. And both tell you that the creature devoured several men and horses in a whirl of seconds with jaws and fire one man even telling you of a creature holding a horse in its mandibles diving back into the sand. Uh, it sounds, as far as you can tell, like both of these groups had encountered the same creature. And if you, because you get an opportunity at this because you're getting the direct accounts, guy who surely knows things. Uh, I know some things. I don't think I'm... L listening to your description, I don't think I know much about this. But maybe. I might. I actually might have a shot. It would be a nature or arcana check. Uh, let's go with nature. It's a plus 22. Well, that's not bad, actually. Not bad. Are you like not an bad. expert in nature? Uh, no, no. I'm just trained. That's just trained and my I wisdom's good. Trained We're level yeah, 16 you are, now. You're a wisdom caster, aren't you? No. No, you're... Charisma caster, but the boost, the boost got, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why we're so hot. Boost yeah, this is for literally. Your world yeah, no, like Roshin literally grew up in the middle of a, a forest, like so. Nature yeah, that's makes fair. sense for. That's fair. It's never really. I've this is literally the first time to ever come into play, though. It's a twenty-two. It's a twenty-two. Congrats, you got a twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> Effectively a thirteen, then. <laughs> you grew up in a forest. You did not grow up in a desert. You are... I'm so sad that I rolled a 17 for you and it failed. Uh, you are... Oh, wow. You're just not sure what exactly this monster could be. Uh, but obviously you do put together that if there is any way you could organize some fire protection, that would probably be useful. The recurring themes are beetle the size of an elephant, lots of fire, mm -hmm. big angry jaws, and uh, of course its ability to burrow through the ground. Uh, but B, you have no idea what kind of creature that could be. Wow, 39 failed. Dang. 39 failed. Wow. Um, it's all right, actually. Uh, uh, Roshin is used to not really knowing too much about things. Uh, if she looks at something, she can figure out what it's weak to and kill it without knowing what it's called. So <laughs> we're going to go with that true. plan. Yeah. Thing. We're going to go with that plan. Um, but it sounds like something name. I'm going to want to bring my friends along. It definitely sounds like something <laughs> that may be like a team building exercise this coming fire day. It's wheel day right now, so it's two days in the future. Two days in the future? Uh, cool. So you get so... one more downtime day, and then if you all wanted to go out on fire day to take up 
uh, Miss Lalia Khalid's offer. About how big is the campground? Is is the camp for the caravan? Or like how like how much square footage um, they take up? When not they a ton. The caravans. There are no massive caravans. They walk for largely exactly this reason. Uh, there are freak accidents. There are bandits. There are. I mean, even a farming caravan of produce has coin and value to take, especially you know for slavers that exist in this in this nation. So they actually try to avoid massive caravans. The ones that were attacked would have been like two to three wagons. In that case, uh, I'm going to go... Tomorrow, I'm going to go shopping and buy some scrolls of Wall of Stone. And we'll Hmm. start with that. Not a bad idea. I'm writing the thing down real quick to remember who I gave this name to. Uh, So, Trishik. Pesh. Handing out Pesh. Would you look at the time? It's Pesh o'clock. So... Pesh Pesh. Money. Again, this is a massive business in the city. The Pesh, which is actually not... I mean, it is also the drug. It's also a plant. That is the plant, right. The plant Pesh. Refined is, Pesh is the, is the drug. drug. The plant Pesh is, uh, got its name from the city and the nation of Catapesh. And uh, the, 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 the Pesh plant itself has a great, variety, a great variety of uses. Of course, it can be refined and distilled into an incredibly potent hallucinogen. Uh, which is quite, well, not incredibly fun to listen to, really, but like, you know, just your average enjoyable recreation of a listen to, which is available throughout the city fairly commonly. Roshin has a spell that's a very potent hallucination. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it has a, a great amount of other uses. The League of Peshmongers is not here for that. They are absolutely here for the drug. <laughs> um, they are. <laughs> when eaten or smoked, Pesh gives users a sense of well being. Sometimes with hallucinations, aggression, and exhaustion. Yeah, so it's like mild hallucinogen is really what we're... Depends on how much of an overdose you're hitting. And aggression and exhaustion. What does that look like? Like It's like tears. Ah. It's like you get aggressive, and then after the adrenaline wears off, you're just tired. So most of my college career, got it. Mm -hmm. So... As you uh, work with the, uh, and start to kind of investigate the guild and see if there's any way you can bring them around to you, uh, you learn actually a fairly interesting fact that a bumper crop of pesh has come in from overseas. uh, And it is a much greater supply than what is normally available within the city of Catapesh at this time of year. This is getting into Erastus, which I believe is like early fall is what we're getting into here. Uh, this crop has been brought in since it just flourished so well. It's also kind of surprisingly is that a lot of the pesh at this point is actually grown overseas. A lot of it doesn't actually come from Canada pesh anymore. A lot of it's Kadirin. <laughs> it's the Idaho potato thing all over again. <laughs> wow. The vast majority of Idaho's potatoes are from Oregon. Taters. But uh, a lot of this is actually Kadirin and grown overseas. But this is far more than what they expected. Most of which brought in from the farmer's unit, of course, goes through the League of Peshmongers because a lot of it goes out to the city for its other uses. All that which is going for, you know, the pesh comes through them. And you, at this point, as a 16th level character who's pretty good at investigating things, doesn't necessarily need a role. Don't be impetuous. Kind of put together that they're having a hard time attempting to kind of artificially stifle and restrict this supply because they don't want the pesh market to crash. Mm. If their their entire guild is sort of predicated on yeah, well, it's, it's just let's call it what it is, drug dealing. Uh, and if the value of the pesh on the street drops because of this incredible oversupply, it's going to be bad times for the like, pesh mongers. They need to diversify into avocados. Guacamole is no, pretty profitable. No, what they need to do is... No, they that was, I was literally racing to think of a way you could make avocados into a drug, and I couldn't do it. Like, oh, no, they're just... They're guacamole. expensive, and you can sell them. Like, seriously, like yeah. the, the legalization of marijuana in the United States has caused, like, drug cartels to lose their shirts, so they're actually having to diversify and, into like, avocados. be cartels about other things, and avocados is one of them. Yes. Yep. That is true. This is an actual thing. This is an yep. actual thing. This is an actual thing. Oh, okay. Huh. Nick rock said out. it, so it has to Rock be out with your guac out. So definitely on the list of people that I just will believe if he tells me there's a thing that's happening know. in the world. So, okay, diversify into avocados, perhaps. But they're, they're not <laughs> wanting to do that. Uh, but beyond that, you also learn that this is causing them a second wave of trouble. Because the Pact Masters are not happy about them artificially throttling the pest supply to the not city. Not happy about that? 
They are, you know, the, the thing is named after the city, but you know, it's been here long enough that like, you know, would you stop what the pact master's reasoning is? Stop playing with market forces. Only the pack master is supposed to do that. <laughs> This is the Fed. But notably, were you? Uh, did you think that the Packmasters were like a Paladin Order or? No, they're they're they're, they're upset about that and not, nothing else wrong going on inside the city. Well, yeah, yeah. that's money. Notably, screw with the economy, man. Like, yeah, Pesh is not addicted. Do you not know, like, that the thing of most powerful countries is you can literally mess with anything you want except for their money, and mm -hmm. they're going to be okay with it? Packmasters going to kind of intervene here. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that, as you start to kind of, you know, ply the trade of Trashik here and try to see if there's a way that you can turn either of these woes to your advantage. It's more bad than good for you. Already, as Zader has said... Oh, no, said, it's fantastic for <laughs> me. There's a stock somewhere of way too much pesh that's going to burn. I mean, that would be good for them. Uh... Oh, that's going to be super easy, too. Pack it's dried. Mad, it's but... dried and preserved because it had to go overseas. Yeah, I don't think the Packmaster was super happy about that. The thing we're trying to do is get the Packmaster's protection off of Scarlet Giant. But, uh. You blame it on the Scarlet Giant. They yeah, are blame already. Blame it on the Scarlet Giant. We got manacles. They're already. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave the manacles all over the fire. Heroes. They are Hero. already <laughs> famously apolitical within the city because they are here to deal drugs and not any sort of political allegiances. Uh, and even more so now that they are kind of getting double fisted by this oversupply problem and the uh, growing unhappiness of the pact masters. If there was ever a time that they were going to break their apolitical stance and throw their weight to one side or the other, it very certainly was not going to be here. But what do you want to attempt to roll, my friend? I would assume Lore Underworld is a very suitable... Would absolutely mm. let you Lore Underworld, the League of Peshmongers, 100%. The, the, leave of, the League of Extraordinary Drug well, Dealers. It's only an 18, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to use it. I have it for a reason. It's trained and I have no intelligence. I was going to say, how in the heck? We've already gone through this. So you rolled it. Oh, it's plus. You rolled it two? No, it's a plus 18. Yeah, you, oh, roll you roll it. You get, oh, no, you can just roll this. This oh, isn't like, you're not knowledge checking. This is for okay. influence. You can just roll this. His was a knowledge check. That's Are right. you kidding me? <laughs> 20s happen, baby. Shashik was built for this moment. This moment. This none of the other moment. moments. Dude, this is this is drug dealing and none of the None of the murder. What did you the, think was going to happen? I mean, you set this up when Valia asked him for Pesh. I mean, really. You really did. Oh. What What were you expecting? The long oh, run. Not for you to <laughs> drop a 20. I've rolled the Malachite twice today, and it's been two 20s. So. I'm happy. I told this. you. You learn the Malachite. That the it's overpowered. League of Peshmongers might actually be a complete dead end as far as support is concerned. But your day is far from fruitless. Because asking around, you learn about a uh, an unofficial 14th guild of the city known simply as the Unseen Hand. The Packmasters have ruled Katapesh for like as long as Katapesh has existed. It has been- I found the Illuminati day one. Actually at least a millennium that the Packmasters have been in control. And these aren't even like public figures. You you can't even go like to a public record of who are the Packmasters. You don't even, that's not even publicly available. They are, like the Packmasters almost are the Illuminati. So little is known about them. And it is very rare that any of them preside even over the Council of Guilds and are just there almost as a figurehead. A lot of people, you know, aren't super happy about the fact that the city is largely ruled by an unseen hand. So, going the direction of the ironic title, there is almost a resistance network that attempts to undermine the Packmasters. Now, most people in Catapesh are perfectly fine with them because they believe they rule the city perfectly fairly, and their main priority seems to be uh, promoting commerce, uh, the thing that everyone in the city cares about. It's an but, economic bill. But they can be very harsh. 
and some of their punishments throughout the years for those who have displeased or betrayed the pack masters have been well it looks it, it makes kill hauling kind of look like a slap on the wrist sometimes they're very public and sometimes very unpleasant the unseen hand you want to explain keel hauling to the people who don't know what that is no no uh, why not later if it's ever relevant <laughs> The Unseen Hand may not be a guild and may not have any votes on the council, but they have their hands also in many pockets, uh, manipulating a lot of strings through blackmail, bribery, sometimes outright terrorism. Uh, they are very much the thing that something goes wrong in a city and it's like, those darn Unseen Hand are ruining my crops or whatever. Mm. Very likely, very possibly what the triad may have blamed the Farmers Union's pesh fields burning down on is some kind of blackmail or play from their hand. How to contact them or how to get in touch with them is beyond the scope of a day's investigation, even on a critical success, but you do learn a name. Ghost. The uh, yeah. self-proclaimed mantle their leader has taken. I mean, you don't just walk into a bar and go, can, can I speak to Cosa Nostra? Ghost isn't a name. No, it's a title. It's a monster. It's not that. It's a whole category. Or there. she might be able to pass that one. Yeah. The ghost one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I passed it, to be fair. So 20s. that leads mm -hmm. us to Marshall. Ha ha! Who goes back to meet up with Toddy One-Eye. Uh, have breakfast with him, discuss the glorious victory that you have enjoyed the day prior. And this will be your first time actually meeting with One-Eye, who is very, very much impressed with what you've done. He is probably maybe more venerable than you pictured him. And the fact that he was just dethroned in an actual like pit fight within the last month or two it's kind of surprising due to the fact that the man is so wrinkled, his face so gnarled that his eyes are very barely even visible. You mean his, his eye? His, the holes where eyes would be. You can't even immediately tell which one is the one that's missing. Ew. <laughs> uh, beneath his massive bushy gray eyebrows that like almost combine with the hairline that seemingly hasn't receded at all. Uh, but he wears a dark green bandana tied around the top of his head. And his face hangs down, almost like a beard would, almost jowled mm. on the sides of his head. He's uh, dressed surprisingly plainly. And as he meets you, the whole of his face kind of like rises up in a smile as all these wrinkles and rolls. He's like a chow chow. Wow. Okay, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hate you. Hate Don't ruin this one. So, so he's like a shooting His face guy. is like a chow chow, the way you described it. When I agreed to meet with you, I'd heard you'd left quite an impression <laughs> in my old arena. I had never expected that you'd leave one equally strong across near the whole of the town the day before we met. How the hell are you, Marshall? Oh, I'm great. I go to shake his hand properly. I'll put a surprisingly kind of small the skin almost feeling like paper, like he feels fragile in your hand. What is fragile? But then he grips it <laughs> with a strength oh. fully unexpected, almost matching your own. I, I'm Shakes like, oh, oh, plus ah, strength. well, I can definitely tell, even though you're somewhat retired, you still got the good old fight in you. Ah. Uh, if that sand claws woman had met me properly in a contest of strength, she wouldn't have had a, the slightest chance of best of me. Oh, really? I, I pull up a chair and sit down with him. Uh, and I'm... I pull out my special uh, <laughs> flask of uh, dwarven ale. I'm like, a little spice up for the morning? Uh, not something I'd ever say no to. I pour him a, a cup. Uh, but she's got... Does the cup sizzle? Two score years on me. I couldn't match the speed of her youth. Wow, it's not about the youth, it's about the spirit. Uh, you know, the spirit will get you onto the field, and if you're lucky, perhaps it'll keep your conscious off of it. But it's not one that'll carry you through a fight, Marshall. Not much I can tell you for sure. I mean, no offense, you know what I, but 
I beg to differ if you couldn't tell. Cheers. Hit it. It might burn just a little bit because he's a human, I would presume, right? He is a human, yeah. He's. Oh, yeah. It's going gonna, gonna to burn short just a little bit. For a human. Maybe like 5'4. He's. Uh, I'm actually taller than yeah, him. He's a pretty small <laughs> old man. So many hits in the noggin. But yeah, he just gets hammered down over his, his spine, just compresses. Yeah. But he, he holds himself he, he, in high regard. His posture is as straight as a man half his age. He doesn't have any kind of yeah. slouch or bend to him. Okay. Well, Marshall, I imagine you didn't have come here to hear tales of my defeat. Well, what is it you're after? Well, don't get me wrong. I love good old fighting stories, especially in a grand arena like this. It's a very impressive place. But I, I had two things I had to ask, if you don't mind. One, what exactly? I mean, I've only heard little rumors and tales back and forth for, between some of the other fighters. But what exactly happened between you and Sandy Claus? Uh, per se, as my first question. Oh my god. Sandy Claus. Every time he says it, I'm like... And as you spend uh, the morning with Toddy here, uh, he kind of explains to you a, a simple rundown of what happened. Truth be told, Sandy Claus was a relative newcomer to the guild. She hadn't been there terribly long. Uh, but she had made a name for herself much the same way that you had, uh, mm. through sheer proficiency. Uh, she was there... She became their headliner within just a couple of weeks. She was an unstoppable force on the battlefield. And it is largely because she is just almost the same concept of how Trishik deals with things. She is just so agile. Mm. He can tell you tales of her flipping atop these 30-foot uh, poles with near a single motion and damn near being able to jump between the group of them. And she mm. simply dances around her foes. Uh, it is a spectacle that is highly visual and one that the crowd was absolutely enamored by. Okay. And she was she is completely and wholly undefeated in any kind of single combat. Interesting. Um, she didn't have any particular team. Of course, they had team events, and sometimes she would be joined by some of the other gladiators, and they're always stealing the show herself. But she, she seemed to have no one she held close save herself. Hmm. And then, quite simply, with her growing stature, she started to question why this old man was still running the guild, still making the decisions. And over time, seemed to almost supernaturally sway a lot of sentiment to her side. Mm. Uh, especially along the lines of a lot of the bigger investors and players throughout the city who keep the Gladiators Guild running. In particular, the Scarlet Triad and the Aspis Consortium both pushed fairly hard for uh, change within the Gladiators Guild, and they were intertwined enough with the bankrolls that Tati couldn't really do much other than attempt to defend himself in a fight. To accept her challenge, which he lost pretty spectacularly. He was a strong man and a powerful fighter, but he quite simply could not keep up with Santa Claus. Okay. Well, in that regard, Marshall, you know, munching at his breakfast and taking a sip of his ale, listening to what happened. So, that makes some sense. You know, I, I don't know if you saw our fight, but I have a fighter on our team that fights very similar to what uh, she does. Um, I will say this. How would, my, as far as my uh, second question would go to you, how would you feel about, you know, possibly taking your old position back if you had some help. But in exchange, you help us. I think that in a lot of ways, perhaps I should be thankful for what Santa Claus has done. Allow me to retire in the of my twilight years. After my most recent showing, that's an impossibility, Marshal. There's no way I could lead the guild again. Wow. But her rise could very well be her downfall. You, from everything I've heard, not just have the support of many of my friends and companions from the guild, but you have the city behind you. The attention span of the common folk is terrifyingly narrow, I've found. 
Uh, they want to forget one hero as soon as a new one arises. And right now, you and your friends, your heroes of Breach Hill, you are, well, <laughs> very much that. Mm. If you want the support of the guild, for, well, especially if you want to stand against the triad, you're going to need a different guildmaster. Well, in that case, if you're not going to be, if you're retiring and, you know, not exactly up for retaking your old title, is there someone in particular you would recommend that you would uh, trust? Uh, you might think that the Gladiators Guild simply settles all their disputes on the sand, but there's always politics and backroom dealings to be done. Even in the month I've been gone, I've been attached enough. I wouldn't have the best idea of what's happened in my absence. You know what? You might do best to ask around yourself, but Marshall, if you want to offer me anything, parlay this victory of yours over Dune Shaker. Call the chaise shock out. Call her down as she spoke to me. Strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> That's ironically what I was thinking. I was going to challenge her to a uh, good old-fashioned uh, duel, more or less, and uh, see if she would accept some terms. You know, Victor takes all. If you... Well, I suppose one stereotype exists for a plain enough reason. One legend of the Gladiator's Guild. No man or woman has held their title at the top of the arena once they've been defeated within it. I mean, I don't know if she'll accept your challenge. I was faced with few other options. But well, if you can rally enough of the audience behind you, well, the investments behind the scenes will have no choice to push her as they did me. Well... In that case, I might need a little inside information, a little help from a, you know, very glorious old fighter such as yourself. So if you're feeding me the good stuff, then I'll guarantee to get to, to the top spot and make the attention that you suggest that I should have. He gives you a bit more information that might be usable uh, before I, uh, a after parting ways as, as he leaves early, uh, probably before even the afternoon to go back to his gainful retirement. You asking around some more at the Gladiators Guild, perhaps beginning to lay the groundwork, start to put together how this might be established. Now, of course, any of you could walk in there and be like, fight me! But she's just going to say no. She'll like, why would I do that? You yeah. are going to need to push her to the point where declining your challenge is no longer an option. If you get the public sentiment and the will of the Gladiators Guild and most of its people, its, its main men, behind you if this gets posed as a legitimate challenge rather than just some fresh faced newcomer with one lucky victory lucky put it up <laughs> so her only means to decline would be cowardice she would have no choice but to accept so I guess my next so question. you have a new downtime activity that you can perform now you can spend a day issuing a challenge Two sand claws with the head of the Gladiators Guild. And there are a variety of ways you can do this. This is like the Gladiators Guild. You can do this with athletics or intimidation. You can do this with performance. You can do this with a fitting lore that you have. I'm actually going to do intimidation because that's Well, not actually... now. This is a new thing you can do in the future. Oh, like, in your the future. Your day was gathering all this information. Never mind. My bad. And later that afternoon, that evening, when the five of you reconvene back at Zaytar's. You have a lot that you have learned. I, hey, I, I found the Illuminati, guys. <laughs> you heard of the Illuminati. I, I have found them as much as anyone else has found them. Do I get a second influence check because no. I have Hobnobber or no? Hobnobber is gathering information. Okay. I didn't know if that's what we were doing. No, you're influenced. Like, okay. That's a different thing. Influenced. Right. They're um, done. Well, we had quite a busy day. Oh, I, bet. I think me and Resume were they're very, very successful. Oh, I mean, yeah. We got those... Talking about planar Barristers. law is extremely fascinating. They told me about a case where they right, had to take so a nature to the What breast. did you do for your day? <laughs> well, uh, basically, there is too much pesh and uh, not enough at the same time. They're not going to be useful. But I did find a hidden... Into, into their own supply, are they? A little bit. Yeah, I okay, Some makes people sense. were uh, not quite all there. Yes, yes, yes. But we do have a... Uh, 
a new addition for your list. What if there was a uh, resistance? Or a, oh, a Trishik, shadow? Don't or... be talking about a resistance to a corrupt government if it's not true. You're just you're toying <laughs> with my heart. No, no, there is actually a resistance against the Picked Mister. Res oh, of Rasheen, course that's is. a little bit of saliva. Ah, I'm sorry, thank you, thank uh, you. Some people in the city do not like that there is a shadow organization running things. Mm. So they have made their very own shadow organization. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only it's the only rational that, that response, makes sense. Really. Fire, fire with fire. <laughs> Effectively there is a shadow war going on. Huh. Mm. And we don't to know how to contact them, but I was given a position that we could look into by the name of Ghost. Oh, that's hmm. very helpful. No, 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 actually, that, that fits the mold usually. That's the revolutionaries, they go for like dramatic names like that that they just kind of think up off the top of their head Name right away. Bill. So, going in the street and yelling out Ghost repeatedly is going to help? I get you some odd looks, I suppose, and maybe the authorities will be questioning you or looking at you. Please don't do that, actually. But no, if we could actually find out a bit about them. Actually, you know what? Uh, um, if we actually continue our, our uh, activities to destabilize uh, the guilds and city, particularly they will the triad, contact us. I suppose that would get us a inroad. That could be very useful. Anything oh. we do that is going to be publicly uh, noticed, that will get them to contact us. A revolution after me on Speaking heart. of public, that's like it was made for you. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of public, so I had a very interesting breakfast with old One Eye, and he gave me some very interesting details on how uh, we might be able to sway the gladiators. If not, maybe just take it over. Hmm. I suppose that's one way to do it. For lack of a better term, we just gotta grant some favor in the arena or with the other fighters, and once we, for lack of a better term, become, you know, the talk of the town more than we already are, then we can challenge the leader, and if she refuses, she'll look like a coward, and, you know, worst case scenario, you know, we have to fight her head on. Can you imagine if at the guild meeting, you're the one in the seat for the representative of the Gladiators Guild? Actually, it's and funny you, you get to vote against them. That'd be spectacular. Actually, it's funny you said that because I was actually going to ask you guys what would you think if I became the new temporary leader of the Gladiators Guild. Oh, I'm all for it. It fit that you'd fit in the chair perfectly. Start I mean, honestly, hearing Raz in the background I'm casting not, a spell. I'm not uh, <laughs> I cast Nightmare on Santa Claus. Yeah. We've both seen her face I and I know her full name. I know. Yep. I know. She's on the list. So. With all that knowledge. <laughs> Next time I see her, I'm casting this Outcast Curse on her. setting is perfect for all of those weird curses and like situational spells that are not combat useful, but do social things like Outcast Curse I'm and gonna, Nightmare. I'm so like, going to cast Outcast so Curse on her. so many people that you can hit with that kind of stuff in this city. Right. And it will yeah. have a lasting effect. It's not like, ah, There's ah. a long-term uh, campaign here, as you're trying to say. Oh, wow. Trying. Outcast Curse would be really, I am really no hard to go and pander to the crowd under Outcast that, Curse. That is <laughs> <laughs> very tough. Bestow, yeah. wait, bestow Curse, even. Like, you could just hit someone with a long-lasting penalty that just while you're here, they have to deal with it. So... Uh, with that day, I talk about the farmers thing. By the one, way. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, you and you, right? You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah. By the way, we, we got gotta go work. kill a giant right, fire beetle and. Nick hadn't gone yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, with one more guild behind you, an in for a second, and the discovery almost of a third, a fairly effective day. The following day, Oath Day. Uh, if you want to, uh, I assume that the group of you are also going to agree to go with Valia Khalid's offer and uh, nah. joke. Good luck, Roshi, and saw you. Good luck, idiot. <laughs> right, I get it myself. No problem. Uh, I if mean, somebody does want to attempt an Arcana nature. or a nature check, the a knowledge check, best I can. it is going to be at a penalty because you're just getting Roshin's description of the panicked farmer's description, and you are now third hand knowledge. It's okay. Um, Bardic lore obscured desert bugs. Okay. I, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with uh, Arcana because I speak Roshin. And you can't critically fail, so you can just roll yours. I would say that, I would say there's not a danger of critically failing this one because there is so little information. That's a nat you, twenty. Like, you seriously rolling a nat twenty? I just rolled a nat twenty, and that's she gonna be a forty-eight. What in the heck? She speaks. She How speaks Roshin. She speaks Roshin. I told you I spoke. I told you I speak Roshin. I don't Roshin. speak Roshin. She speaks Roshin. She, I watch her sleep. You still gotta roll it. I, I watch this get. woman sleep eight. every uh, night. So they say it's really big, so like a, right? And it's it's the, it's the like third hand. Ash colored. Yeah. No, no, no. Do you have a picture? You're really bad at describing things. 
Are you kidding me? What she did was brilliant. She it's clear. It. She understood. Miss May's weird and out there. Marshall she, makes a crude drawing you know, out of crayon. You know, Raz, things if, it if, looks like. You can't say, I, I, if it's just me, yes, I could be weird and out there. If it's just Resme, yeah, but if we understand each other, Trishy, maybe you're the one who's Trishy, weird you and out her? there. So I while it's a terrible listening. description <laughs> and series of descriptions from a sequence of unreliable narrators here. I'm very reliable. It is. <laughs> are you quite? Uh, there are some pieces of this that are very specific. The black spiked carapace, the beetle-like appearance, the strange vents that exhume smoke and seemingly lava, and the thing burning from inside like it was powered by an infernal engine. It's very specific bits of this that stood out that come through. And there's not a lot of things, other than apparently Torkoal, that this description suits. You're not confident in this because these creatures would be something that would be more of a legend. And at that, even just like a religious tale than it is like an actual being that you have ever heard any real confident evidence exists. I'm going to say this word and one to two of you are going to be very scared immediately. Huh. So you're trying to tell me that we're going to encounter something that my grandfather told me bedtime nightmares about. This would literally yeah. be like a religious, like, creationist mythological creature about, like, the like, birth or, of like, Galeria. Like, literally, like, she's like, you're telling me that we're going to go fight, like, a bedtime story. Derp and Colby have the exact same expression. I have this this right now. <laughs> doesn't fit anything. I might not know it. I don't I'm trying to think piece, I know the I'm trying name, to piece it together. I know the creature. But a Zotani spawn. Yep. All right. I told you to stop making up animals. It's very rare I don't know that, that a creature I'm not familiar with Ooh, gets introduced. Band of Badgers is all up Wolverine in here. Band of like, badgers. Normally, We're, uh, apparently, you... <laughs> gonna go fight a Zotani spawn. Normally, when you're describing a creature, uh, I can. I know I'll what it is it. ahead of time so, by name. I this, don't know this one. This takes a few steps of a tangential explanation here. Galarian, so goes the tale of the creation of the world, is a prison, first and foremost. The reason that all of the gods have their eyes on this world and take such interest in it and intervene so highly and so strongly is because at the core of Galarian, there is a creature called Rovagug. Devourer of the literal universe. Resume's um, literally gonna make everybody get into pajamas with like treats and a fireplace and have blankets over them while she's telling the story. Supposedly, you don't want me in my at pajamas. the dawn of creation, all of the, basically all of the gods, we're talking like all of the standard pantheon, we're talking like Asmodeus, we're talking Aspis, oh. the original dragon, everybody came together to seal Rovagug in the center of the planet so he would not, you know, eat existence. Hmm. But Rovagug is an incredibly powerful god, obviously. It took, like, the oh. Avengers of all of the gods took the to seal him. Yeah. Took the full pantheon. Hmm. And he has sired several similarly potent deity level offspring. One of those is known as Zotani, the fire bleeder. Zotani is a single drop of blood they managed to get Rovagug to shed in the battle. And this being is again like god tier power. But Rovagug sealed within the uh, the planet. He could not impart all of his power to anyone herald, and Zotani was slain. It is said that his corpse is interred underneath the pale mountains of Katapesh, that the gods put them there to hold him within the crust of the world. Zotani spawn, so the legends say, are what have 
become of just the raw divine energy contained within the corpse of Zatani, which We're again is a single drop of Robo Ghost. We are blood. literally eating like the like the flesh eating like bacteria that are feeding on the god of the blood of the god thing. That made total right. Sense. So what again? Is taking over the story now. <laughs> If these are even real, and again, the only reason you bring this up is because they are like a very unique looking creature and this description, the bits that you get match it perfectly. Match it perfectly. Like it's like eerie. This is going to be a divine vessel of chaos and fire and hate. Right. Oh, we're going to we're gonna need to prep. And it exists pretty much only to destroy. It will. It is a physical manifestation of chaos and destruction. Okay. Um, you would know that what it is physically capable of? Who knows? <laughs> Whatever it wants. Whatever it wants. It, it is physically capable of fire. Yeah, but if it is a physical manifestation of chaos and fire, law and cold seem like they could be a good idea. Yeah, fiery body also seems like it could be a the good fire idea. Fire immunity also mm. perhaps very helpful or high resistance to it if possible. Uh, it strikes you as you were already going out to prepare for this. Now you can do it a little more directly. Uh, this may be a very threatening encounter without any proper preparation. Mm. Sheeny, this is great that you 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 memorized all the parts that I really needed. You did such a good job. Ah oh, yes. See, and Raz was giving me a hard she time said about it. She spiky body and fire. That's it. I think you just jumped to a conclusion and, and we're pretty sure that's correct. And the ash color was very important. And the flame vents that came out of it, I had the size of it right. And the spitty the bops. Right. And the spitty bops. Spitty bops. Yes. Well, good news, everyone. You have one more day uh, before we are going to go prove ourselves to the farmer's union by fighting God. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> not the goal you thought you were going to have for the farmer's union, was it? The Scarlet Triad the only just way casually to walks past this thing every week. And we're having to go out there. Chances are the Scarlet Triad's like got a deal. They give it meat and it's like, oh yeah, you're cool. So you have this oath day, <laughs> another day of downtime to prepare to try to work with some other guilds uh, if you can, try to lay some more groundwork. We'll go around this way this time. We went this way last time. Rez, what do you want to do? I want to go to the Baker's Guild. The Baker's Guild. You're going to go hang out with the, you know, it's going to smell good. It's going to be nice. Yeah. You're going to get some treats. It's gonna yeah, be hopefully. Day. You're going to have a great day. Um, <laughs> Rasheen is getting supplies. Yeah, Rasheen's getting supplies. Got mm-hmm. day of shopping. Yes. There is still, I know, a thing that you wanted, an uncommon thing, a ring that you had not gotten a hold of yes. yet. I, you, I, I, a, I can pick it up. Yeah, I remember you talking about it. You wanted, stone uh, that, is like, that is a check because yeah. it's uncommon, so Didn't it is finding it. I, I you made the check. You found it, like, exists. You yeah. had found the first, you had sourced the first thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, she, it's like a full downtime day check. per mm-hmm. on the common item you nope. want okay. to Okay. Yeah. So you could you could break that check. I, you could get all your mundane and common supplies regardless. Perfect. And if you make the check, you can also get the uncommon. Uh, resume? Um, resume is going to go, uh, hopefully with uh, Trishik's help, and hit up the Alchemist Guild. Alchemy time. Two of you are going to go Alchemy. Uh, do I have to ask what Marshall's doing today? Well, we already established that I'm going to, is it, for lack of a better term, bully my way into the Gladiators Guild is and it, getting influence. Is it issue a challenge? I feel like it's issue a challenge. All uh, right, Marshall, you're connected to this one at this point. You're going to spend the day trying to call out Sandy Claus. You, boy, you have like a smorgasbord of skills you're great at to try for this. Uh, is it going to be athletics? No, it's actually going to be intimidating. Is your intimidate it's better than your athletics? By one. Wow. It is legendary. And it's I guess legendary. You also, you have the greater... Uh, you have the... Beat. I have the you greater demon mask. Bonus. So you greater demon mask. So you actually have a good item bonus to it. Yep. All right, give me an intimidate check for your day of work here. I'm going to spend a hero point for that. Be scarier. I mean, it's not terrible. It could be better. It could be way better. Why are you saying it's not terrible? The derp school of rolling dice. It's like, is that an 11? I can't see what that is. That's was. a two. It's, I rolled into the same thing. Well, it's a 31 altogether then, which is kind of sad. But. 31 as you start to work here. Uh, you literally just obviously... walking around. Sandy Claus, fight me. <laughs> Come many, get some. Many of the gladiators, either because of distaste for their current guild master or because they think it's funny, uh, clearly support you in this endeavor. But it's going to take outside pressure to cause Sandy Claus to acknowledge us literally at all. Um, obviously, the operators of the arena and those who run the thing, it is an oath. They don't even have a major event. Like, Vichess isn't even here today. Okay. There's no way you can get to her personally 
and your efforts, though you seem to have some a lot of some support from within the guild, are, in the grand scheme of things, somewhat fruitless at first. Mm. Uh, Trishik and Resme. So it takes a bit, yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna be like a walk-in challenger and then she'll fight you tonight. It's uh, it's gonna take a little setup to get engineered. So she and Resume are going to the order of the alchemists and potion makers. Yep. And, and uh, uh, again, they are a very direct business here. It is a clear front. Uh, they are an organization who runs a great number of things. Again, it's not largely adventuring potions and poisons and bombs. It is mostly simple things. It is cosmetics. It is and soaps. soaps. It is cosmetics. Uh, it is a lot of sort of higher end, like upper echelon of society things, but there are also sample things, antidotes and anti-plagues are probably 85% of what a general, an average alchemist sells, because those are the things uh, that- People can afford. People can afford and are going to think to come to an alchemist for, but there is a lot more than that. Um, there are some more, a lot more uses of some of these basic bombs than you would really think. Uh, simple flasks of alchemist fire are usable for a lot more than throwing at swarms of beetles. Do you need to? The normal use of alchemist fire is it's like having a lighter to start a fire. You just a put very a, aggressive lighter. No, you put like a drop on a piece of wood and it'll just catch fire. But you, ha you are trying to like burn out a pile of compost uh, to fertilize a field with its ash. You are trying to remove a stump that is particularly attached. Uh, alchemist fire has a great amount of uses. Similarly, you can do uh, equally useful things with frost vials and with uh, tanglefoot bags and with simple adhesives that are not the. Uh, the super unguin that never, yeah. what's it called? Unguin of timelessness. Not that, but what's the thing it's called? Um, the sovereign glue. But they're not sovereign glue, too. I was just going to say what I do love height. sovereign glue. These uh, are businessmen, first and foremost, who are a coalition simply, uh, who are at the upper echelons here because of the amount of gold that flows through their businesses and because of the skill of their craft and the quality of their work. Showing that you understand their business and you understand their craft would help you a lot. Uh, you feel the most obvious skills to use here would be crafting or arcana. Um, so one thing I am going to do is we found a very interesting um, alchemy treatise that Trashik was busy copying, um, but I have the original, and she thought that it might be interesting to show it to them. They might find it of some professional interest to see types of formulas that maybe they've never seen before okay. in ways that they never thought to put together. So is this, are you arcana checking? No, I am uh, you're, craft. Oh, you're crafting checking. Because okay. I actually have a specialty in alchemy. Oh, fair enough. Give Are you are you going to roll separately or are you going to aid each other? All right, so give me your crafting check first. I figure you guys probably will because you're going to be generally better to roll separately. Two shots. Yep. You guys understand basic math. Uh, give me your crafting check. There's math? <laughs> math is hard. 46. That is a 20! Yeah. <laughs> you just watched me throw it in there. You know, just, huh. just roll your thing. Not a 20. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my beer. Can't Hold let Resme out do you. I don't care what it was. I didn't even look. It's not a 20. It's, I'll it's, take a 15. I can't believe you guys are just literally dropping, like placing 20s on the table. Dude, it's so just sat there and roll it. You got a 37 crafting. and you got a natural 20. That's a 49. Hey, you know, that's another critical success and a success. That's a critical success and a success on a mundane business guild. Um, you also have some connections, some advice that Zader would have given you since this is the guild. She's not a member of it, but she works with it uh, fairly frequently, seeing as she is an alchemist by trade. There are, of course, free agents within the city. Uh, but between your competency I have the literal inventor feed. Yeah, your uh, clear understanding of the business and, uh, again, your ability to relate to these gentlemen. They have no fine political stance. And of, ma of many of the guilds in the city, they're perhaps some of the luckier. They have no real dealings with the Scarlet Triad outside of, you know, I mean, they're intertwined because they sell them some things and they do some supplies with them. And uh, they, have loaned some, they have sent some of their uh, workers, some of their alchemists, some of their masters over to help them with some business uh, like throughout the years. But they have no direct real solid connection and beyond simple exchange uh and you two clearly know what is what's what's going on a critical success and success you know what you're talking about <laughs> you seem to uh be aware of what's going on and they agree sure you know what our deals with the scarlet tried haven't been great anyway uh perhaps it would be better if we dealt more directly and more thoroughly with the aspis consortium who they imagine will surely pick up the slack and the vacuum that scarlet triad will leave 
which you know kind of works out better for everyone. You have the Order of Alchemist and Potion Makers <laughs> on your side. <laughs> easy. Bam. Just keep one shotting guilds, I guess. It's gonna be super easy. Just Barely an inconvenience. Forehead. Uh, we'll skip you for a moment because you're gathering things. And Raz. You were going to the bakers. I'm going to the bakers. You're having a great time. I'm having fun. The Guild of Bakers and Butchers is perhaps the most clandestine and blue collar <laughs> guild that there is here. Yeah. I mean, perhaps even more than the dunks, uh, the dunk carters and the street sweepers. They're almost just like a logistical necessity. But the bakers, I mean, it is a need that is filled. Butchers, they process all the livestock that comes through from the farmers union. Not too much the Imperial Union of Breeders. They don't really have their hands in just like slaughterhouse livestock. They're more horses and camels and higher quality breed uh, but they are very simple lads who you feel like the straightforward diplomatic approach is probably the easiest well good news is i can diplomate kind of good diplomate freaking bard i'm only trained what's wrong what with what you? kind of bard are you You're the knowledge worst. wait what's what's he your starts diplomacy with, modifier he starts off by talking about the dragon i have a 23 <laughs> he starts off by talking about the dragon play. that makes sense I, we've been over this i'm not I'm not that kind of bard Okay, no, no, that, that makes 23 sense. 23's not bad. That's not no. terrible enough. No, no, I'm only trained. So. I am also only trained. Um. <laughs> That's on me. Yeah. I sarcastically held up my hand and made no effort to collect the hero. Yeah, that um, was positive. Raz is just so <clears throat> excited. Because after this, after all this diplomatic, he's getting bread and he's just focused on the goal right. of getting bread. Yeah, but you're, you're having a great, no matter how this goes, you're having a fantastic yeah. day. A uh, one's not fantastic, but the upper crust. The upper crust for a total of a thirty-nine forty with the plus one from connections. Still plus right. one from the connections. Yeah, I mean you seem to make some good inroads here. These seem like simple folk who have no real concerns, and uh, you get some kind of agreements and some nods and some general acquiescence. But I mean, okay, like they don't tell them. This, sorry. They don't the seem idea particularly of... interested in throwing political weight around, but I mean, you you're, you make the beginnings of progress. Yeah. Also, not... Raz is the best kind of bard. You get a hero point. Thank you. The half right bard. <laughs> they're, they're not quite ready to get in bread with you. Okay, so, how's uh, that Rashid, shopping what going are on? You, what all are you looking for? Other than his, I believe his Ring of Stone shifting is the yeah. one that you're after. So I need some Scrolls of Wall of Stone. Enough scrolls of Fiery Body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I need able to use them. I need enough <laughs> ball of stone to be able to make a foundation that the caravan can park on top of, so that the thing can't just burrow through the sand and eat wagons. Mm. Fair enough. Um, and uh, I did have a question. So, assuming this thing might have weakness to cold, if it gets hit by, say, freezing ammunition, which is an item that exists. Um, it doesn't do cold damage, but it has the cold tag. Weaknesses are triggered when that damage is taken. So if Cross it has a cold tag but does not do any cold damage, it will not trigger a weakness. Yeah. Mad Cat 17, the villain point here, because it sounds like we might be fighting something here in the near future, and I don't have three of these. <laughs> and now I do. Well, well. So yeah, freezing yeah. ammunition uh, would not help you with the weakness. They would certainly, I mean, they might get a penalty to save against it. Um, but it would not trigger the mechanical weakness. The no. save is so laughably easy at this level that it's like, can I get a cold weakness out of this arrow? If not, then I'm not going to worry about it. So will some scrolls of Wall of Stone be common enough? Uh, wall of Stone is what, like fourth level, fifth level? It's fifth, fifth level, level, so it's 150 gold up pop. One, three, five, seven, nine. Yeah, ninth level, easily accessible, then Catapash, no problems. You can find as many of those you want. Cool. Um, how many do I think, I, judging by how big they were talking about the caravan is, how many am I going to need to be able to park them on top of it? It's uh, 20 feet by 120 feet. So probably just, I'm making strips. Yeah, you're doing. making a street is what you're doing. So it's like How many lanes does the street need? So it's to like making you're a rest area. I'm uh, making a rest it's stop. 20 feet wide, I mean, because it's... Probably park two wagons next to each other on one 20 foot strip, probably. Hmm. Unless it's like a really wide wagon. Yeah, um, you, uh, yeah, one, the 20 feet wide. One would certainly be enough. One would be enough. 120 feet long by 20 feet wide is definitely enough to park a caravan. Uh, I'm going to get three of them because you never know and they'll come in handy. How many do I need? One? I'll take three. <laughs> Wait. But it's Wait. a great scroll, though. No, yeah. It's just funny the way it came about. Question <laughs> Can I sneak attack without chemical bombs? I mean, so you it's a weapon. Literally. Yeah, it's that, that, that's what I was curious. Well, it has does, to fall within does, certain. Well, doesn't it have to be on your rogue list? 
No, I just. It's gonna be have... agile. I don't think it's agile or finesse. It doesn't have to be agile or finesse. It just really? Has to be I thought that was. Sneak attack. That's not sneak attack. That's my dex to damage. Oh. I think that's light weapons in general. As long as it's a light weapon, he could do it. I think the only real question is, does the splash trait? Because th while it definitely seems you can super... trigger sneak attack damage on the splash. That'd be really funny. Oh, no. More like the splash invalidate sneak attack. It is agile or finesse to trigger. It. That's okay, what I thought. I like, That's what seems, I thought. Ruffian. It definitely Ruffian seems doesn't like that. you should not be able to sneak attack bombs. <laughs> But I'm not sure if you legally can. You okay, put it so in you their cannot. pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can. You just <laughs> you go over his pocket. All right. So you got your scrolls of all stone. <laughs> you don't want your freezing ammunition. Um, yeah, no, because it's not going to be helpful. Um, and I mean, honestly, like, there's consumables I could buy that would probably help. But I mean, that's basically just like, I, I could just put gold into a sack and then hit the monster with the sack of gold. I just hate buying consumables. Do the same thing. <laughs> I just, I, so is it just because we don't of use them? It's a close wall soon. I'm trying to get Marshall stone shifting. All right. Thing. So give me a diplomacy or a society to attempt or appropriate lore. I don't know what lores you have. Um, hag and fortune telling. I can Give try me to. A diplomacy. Oh, um, actually, you can fortune tell where you will find the ring of stone shifting. Give me a diplomacy. How about I cast? I uh, how about I cast locate object? Does locate object not require you to know of? We know of it. Location. I made the check. Discern location. I'm sorry. I know of it. I made I know the check to know that's it. That's like, that's like casting discern. That's like going to Walmart and walking in the front door and casting discern object, uh, discern location. Of I mean, there's no I other way I'm gonna buy. find anything in Walmart. No one's ever there who helps me. So there. I do get sneak attack discern on bombs. Discern is a specific item. Um, okay. You know that rings of stone shifting exist. You don't know the specific ring of stone shifting that you're looking for. All right, fair enough. Uh, well, I don't think so on that one. It's a good thought. But I'll go with. I can't again. I can't intimidate the location of this out you of people. Intimidate Where's the ring? Where's the ring? The ring? <laughs> Diplomacy or society? No I, Batmaning for you. You got a business. Diplomacy. Oh, good. Hey, not bad. That's uh, a 14 plus 37. 37 will do it. You would absolutely be able to locate the ring of stone shifting. Bam. Um, as finding out the freezing ammunition with some research wouldn't really help you. The scrolls are easy enough to find. Uh, in any mage's stand, and uh, mage's uh, decent, decent level repository or storefront, and the ring of stone shifting, you could use most of the day to, to track down. Again, they are not common objects, but you find, perhaps, with some tangential assistance, looping through the order of alchemists and potion makers, and while well, these two are really ingratiating themselves, getting some assistance. You're coming out of the meeting and Roisin's talking to someone at the counter. Yeah, and you will come back with a ring of stone shifting for Marshall. So you will <laughs> have that now. It's immediately handy. uses it to test it. You can definitely do that. Hey, uh, watch this. I'm over here. Since we're <laughs> at the Alchemist Guild. I'm over there. Can I pick up a couple of frost files? just draped over you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, mechanically, he could pick them up for you. So, yeah, I would say yeah, we can, you could grab okay. a couple, yeah. So, uh, take off 500 from the pile and I'm gonna get two greater frost files. Cause I get sneak attack with them because it's a throw it's not a thrown melee weapon, it's the ranged attack. We'll oh, you at, don't need agile on your ranged attacks. We'll look at this on break. I'm pretty confident. I read you. it. Ranged attacks get sneak attack. Thrown melee weapons have to be agile or finesse. Mm. That's the we'll look at it on yeah, break. You are you literally determine. throwing a bomb. I I will I will like just hard no you can't if I cannot find an explicit yes. Uh, you Ghost can. does have a point. But Oh, you're also not proficient in bombs would be a point that the chat has. It is a martial weapon. Oh, Do I have whatever. I can sneak attack it. <laughs> I mean like you have to hit. <laughs> I just have to trigger the weakness. Splash damage I mean, does that. That's fair. I am 100% unless you show me under the splash trait where it says the words you get sneak attack on splash. I don't care about not the... giving you sneak on splash, but you if yeah. even failing you will take the splash and he will trigger the weakness. Uh, okay. but I mean, depending on the what it is we'll look I at would it. just yeah. We'll look at it we'll on check. break cuz we're going to take break right now because that wraps up that day. And uh, we're just putting guilds in our pockets. You are literally just knocking guilds off the list here, going down the have line a of the bag of fresh bagels. And you got you have some delicious baked goods. I you have some, some supplies and a fantastic okay. ring. Ah. Uh, Trashik is madly figuring out how to specifically hit somebody in the correct internal organ with an explosive that he threw well, he, across this the This is a glowing spot on their back. Resume brought back a Throw it in the vent. Yeah, you throw it. <laughs> There's, he, he has a special targeting reticule. <laughs> You'll Resume. get like a special animation. It'll be like. 
Had the, al- had the Alchemist Guild special make some bath salts for our host. We'll figure it out on a break here. We're going to stand up, stretch your legs, use the bathroom. Got a, a couple of minutes. We're not going to miss anything. When we come back, sneak attack or no sneak attack, uh, we are going to go assist the Farmers Union and possibly fight a lesser deity. That's Why? probably fine. Fine. Why? Yeah, yeah, it's only a demigod. demigod beetle. So we we'll get be mythic right back, after this, everybody. right? Welcome back, everybody. Huddle. We have determined I don't do the thing. We determined he's not getting bombed, so we determined a wide variety of tangential things to sort of that. But if you were enjoying the highlights there, we have not only those, but the entirety of this campaign so far over on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 2perception. Uh, it has a great many things. We are like 70 episodes into the full girth of this campaign at this point, and we are finally kind of within sight of dethroning the Scarlet Triad, which has sort of been the bad guy for the whole it. I mean, we didn't even know who they were for a while. You usually have no idea what you're doing in book one. Book one is children running around accidenting into things until the main story shows up. That's like the 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 adventure path arc. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the main story? So, um, on the bombs and sneak attack damage thing. Uh, So, a couple of things. One, bombs are martial proficiency, which Trishik doesn't have. So, he would be throwing them at literally plus five. (laughs) And something with almost certainly an AC in the 40s. Uh, if you hypothetically could hit him with a bomb, hitting him with directly with the bomb, I guess I don't see any reason why it wouldn't apply sneak damage. It is it is a ranged. It's not a thrown melee weapon, which for some reason it specifically says thrown melee weapon, not thrown weapon. I feel like melee has no business being there, and the returning obvious... weapons. No, returning weapons goes on thrown. Like you put on a javelin. What if he? Yeah, yeah, but that's a thrown melee weapon. Javelins don't have a melee stat. It's not though. It's a javelin. It's not a thrown melee. Javelins don't have a melee stat. Put that on like a dagger. Nope. The dagger would be a thrown melee melee weapon, but it has the unseen hand. So you'd have that. Oh, okay. They they made sneak attack on throwing weapons. It is, I would say, not the best worded thing I've ever uh, read, and may require some degree of a judgment call. Uh, I would say, as written, I don't see why it wouldn't apply to a bomb because the thrown, not melee weapon. I'm not a direct not. hit. I don't know. Uh, regardless, there's no way he's going to get a direct hit without proficiency. So it's kind of a moot point for us right now. Man. So we didn't buy the, the frost things. We're not we're not buying the frost vials. It was an uh, interesting thought that we've never really experimented yeah, The with. martial proficiency requirement kind of puts the kibosh on that thing mm-hmm. pretty hard. Uh, because I think nobody here has martial weapon proficiency except for martial... <laughs> Which is appropriate. It's in his name. <laughs> well, if if you he... shape the alchemical bomb like a sword, and you can hand it to Roshin. Yep. That's how I can use it. You know what Splash is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that thing that happens when I jump in the pool. It's that thing that happens when I'm fighting an alchemical golem and Marshall crits it three times in a row. Oh, <laughs> one of my favorite Too soon. combat <laughs> sequences we've had is Roshin almost dying on Marshall's turn because he literally cannot stop critting the very fragile alchemical golem. It's like crit, crit, stop. and then it did something and it was attack of opportunity and he critted again and that just exploded and in my face. Roshin is just melting. It, it's not like I did it on purpose. It's like, it's fine. <laughs> So, <laughs> the group of you, this fire day now, have a task to which you have been called. And we will see, well, if it is actually the thing that we think it is. This it's, may have It's a just a really big salamander. <laughs> but they, a, they've been overhyping the hell out of it. Just a big, angry lizard. So, you head out pretty early in the morning. Awake and get your things ready, prepare your spells, and uh, without any real delay, are going to need to get going. Uh, it is some couple dozen miles north of Katapesh, just out in the desert. Uh, just the journey there and back would be the work of a full day. And if you were to go all the way to meet the um, to meet the caravan any closer to the border. This would have been a have to be a multi-day trip. That said, uh, I don't know. Is this, you were level 16. Do you not have any better way to get there than just walk? We could hire 
like a carriage. To walk with a carriage. We it turns out all horse. of the instant di distance transportation stuff is uncommon and therefore not available. Well, I could walk least, in the like, air for turns, five minutes. It, I guess Dimension Door is only a mile, huh? Like, it yeah. turns out bards have a cantrip focus spell that this increases your land travel speed. The I mean, time you're going off of it. I can launch Strider us, I don't but I'm have not it. sure. I'm, but I'm not sure how. There's this really cool network of gates that can teleport you across the entire world. I'm you know, I guess you it's up. really hitting me now. We have a 16th level party that is walking the 50 miles out to. Uh, I could fly for a few minutes to meet with the caravan. And it cool distance is actually still a meaningful storytelling it is mechanic. Actually, I actually appreciate it. I was just like, I just, it hit me with a thought while I was reading this. I was like, wait, we're 16th level. Can we level. hire you some horses? Seriously, just walking. I mean, you could get, get camels. camels? You could definitely just hire camels. Let's just hire camels. It's gonna I, be I, fine. I kind of assume you would at least. Get I'm camels. not walking that far. You still have camels you came here on that are. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hire. You have the ones out back. Yeah, sure. Just that you brought yeah. here in the first place. Yep. Uh, you can bring them with you. Fleet step. Just repeatedly. And then off you go. Leaving the walls of the city and the hustle and bustle of Katapesh behind you would be probably the first thing. It's anywhere even remotely close to quiet or peace that you have, a that you have experienced since you arrived in Katapesh in the first place. It's all, near all hours of the day, its streets are packed with business. Fortunately, Zader's estate is tucked a little further into the city than the main entryway, so it's not in the primary nexus of all activity. But still, it is not a quiet, nor is it a particularly dark city. Hmm. Heading out and riding your camels through the morning, you would be traveling for several hours to cover this distance. And uh, well before you would arrive at the point where you're going to meet the caravans and escort them, escort them back, you would pass by on the road here a site that seems very clearly to be the location of the previous attack. It's obvious by the horribly burnt and destroyed caravan, several wagons, only one of which is still intact enough to even deserve the title at this point, gathered around a pile of stones that certainly was once at least meant to be a campfire. Coming through the area, you can see the road passes by an oasis on your left to the west as you continue your trudge to the north here. Uh, or what probably was once an oasis as what looks like the charred, blackened remains of a single tree and some small bits of overgrowth and thrushes around the outside of it have all been reduced to ash cinders or very brittle sticks. Here at the clear sight of the attack, whatever this creature is, it's possible you might get any ability to learn anything further about what happened, or you are you continuing on to, I mean, you could certainly stop for a couple of minutes and look at this. It's not gonna take a, out of the grand scheme of your near day of travel to go meet with them. Yeah, we'll take a Investigating from more yeah. clues is never a bad thing. Give me uh, perception, survival, or nature, Rez. Um, go. I'm reading a spell. Marshall? Um, <clears throat> so I guess way? perception would be my thing. Okay. Nat 20. <laughs> Man. Man. <laughs> We're going to roll like such trash when that monster jumps us. Yep. <laughs> so, Marshall, as you head over towards the dry oasis itself, the small pit uh, that looks like it was once uh, one of the rare sources of life-giving moisture throughout the <laughs> deserts of Katapesh, uh, you walk over and you feel the sand beneath your feet start to become harder and more compact. The sound of your footsteps becomes louder as you cross over the edge of this. Uh, and as you investigate the lip of the oasis itself, you notice that the sand on this uh, eastern edge where it faces the road on the inside of it mm -hmm. isn't even sand anymore. Uh, a large amount of this has actually become glass glass that has been destroyed and shattered into smaller pieces. It's not like there's a single pane on the so inside of the oasis. So very fine grains, like Fairly glass. fine shattered glass. Okay. Uh, were you not wearing boots, walking through this would have immediately become a much worse time uh, because this you, would absolutely be ripping you bloody. Uh, okay. So whatever, you think Marshall would notice whatever creature this was, <laughs> the only logical explanation you can think of is that the fire of their body or their breath or something is so hot that it fused the sand together where it struck. Huh. 
and thirsty. For chic. I'm gonna go with survival. Okay. Uh, 26. Uh, 26. You don't pick up on anything uh, that would tell you anything you don't already know or anything beyond the obvious of this site here. Uh, Rizme. I'm going to go with Arcana because I can. For I, it, If it's a nature check, then I can use Arcana. For any nature check? If it's one of the four it's basic... No, it's... This is nothing to do with magic. Oh, okay, then never mind. I didn't know it didn't... It's nature like nature. Ah, uh, like Outside gotcha. where you are. Then I'm going to use survival. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's going to be uh, 26. Uh, 26, you as well. Yeah, nature magic is more what you want, and survival-wise, you... I'm not living, I don't come from the desert. Grown up an extremely rich and privileged upbringing, and survival would probably not be something that actually, in this situation comes I'm out great to risk. very good at, but not in the desert. That's where you were actually... Um, uh, I was a druid. A druid family, yeah. yeah. You had a druid in your brain for a while, Yeah. but not a desert. No, no desert's not. Uh, Rasheen. Uh, Rasheen's going to go with nature. Okay. Uh, it's a 33. I was a 33, uh, looking over where Marshall had inspected some of this uh, of this oasis with him, Mr. Sheik and Resmere just kind of picking through the ruins of this caravan. Um, the way that the formation of this glass is is interesting in and of itself. Uh, you've been told this thing is about the size of an elephant, but these glass formations, this fusion, where the sand has been uh, recombined and destroyed again from stress and impact, it's not a huge line or a cone or a large sleeping area. It seems to be much on the edge of this oasis around the size of an elephant. Hmm. Uh, you theorize that it's not, it wasn't actually like a breath or anything of this creature, but just possibly the heat of the beast itself. It's present. fused the sand where it traveled. How yes. long ago did they say the last attack was? Did they tell Roshin? Um The last attack would have come through some days ago, let's say like a week and a half. I'm going to cast Retrocognition and sustain it for the full, full duration. Whoa, nice. Ooh. Opening your mind to a cult echoes, you get impressions from past events that occur in your current location. You feel psychic impressions from events that occur over the course of the last day throughout the first minute. And you can 10 minutes, uh, uh, just it sustains up to 10 minutes, right? Yeah. It's up to 10 days. If it happens, well, it's sustained it's a, as a, just an action, so it could be a hundred days that you could look, that you could feel back on this. The action. Because it'd be a hundred actions. actions. Yeah. Wow. Dang. If only you could sustain more than once per turn. Well, level you casting this at just the seven. It's yeah, it's just the seventh level. Spell. Yeah, because the only ones there they just give you. The the further the bigger the gets. Longer time spans. And the longer yeah, time okay. spans become more. So this would be this is like cool. three months that you can look back through. So it's psychic impressions. You're not saying like a vision of what happened or anything. No. But, uh, you cast this for a minute, and you start to focus. You're just drawing pictures in the sand. And there is, uh, for a time, as you focus for a few moments, as it pales back to the few days, you feel nothing. Um, there is nothing but the wind and the heat and just emptiness. There's no psychic impressions, uh, nothing that you're picking up on whatsoever, until there is an explosion of emotion. Uh, with the time you focus on a spell, as you reach back throughout the history of this oasis, almost certainly is the previous attack. You can feel a blinding, like almost impartial <clears throat> whirlwind of fear and panic, uh, which is not, which only grows stronger as you reach back a minute or two before that. And after parsing through these emotions uh, for a few seconds, a few minutes of this time you're looking back through, Another appears, which is a an exponentially more powerful impression. Not one so much of rage or hate that you might have thought, but one of hunger. One of hunger, one of a very base level instinct. It's not emotional. It's almost detached from this miasma of panic and distress and pain that, you, that you're seeing from the uh, those who did not survive the attack, surely. But this stronger energy, the central one, it's just there. It almost doesn't even interact 
with the rest of the impressions, the rest of the emotions that you get. It's just its own almost distinct. For him, it was Tuesday. Like <laughs> We need to feed it. And this goes back further before, in a flash, the emotions to come. All of the fear, all of the panic. Gives itself to lethargy, to boredom, to discomfort. But still, you sense the impression of that one singular mass of emotion that is just that hunger, just that basic instinctual drive. Just the sense that's there, that this, this is food. And as you reach back to what was certainly the moments before this attack, uh, thinking this, that perhaps there is nothing more of value to be found here, this feeling, this impression, doubles. Two spots of this emotion, this instinct, this natural drive from one. Yeah, that's... What that's... if two godly beings? <laughs> or a mommy and a baby. I'm pretty sure even a baby would be very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, uh. So, um... Yeah, that. All of that. <clears throat> oh, great. There's two of them. Um... With a fire yar that melts the sand just by standing near it. Well, if it's just hungry, maybe we can feed it something and make it not care about the caravan. Then it's the caravan is what it wants to eat. Well, uh, why? Just because it's there? Yes, it's food. Can we draw it away and make it want other things? You got another caravan up your pocket. You if you don't really take care of it now, it's just going to hurt a lot more people. I can just make a cow really, really big. I don't think that's going to work. A cow. Well, any sort of meat animal, just a huge cow. Mm -hmm. So you're going to feed it, and that's what you think is going to make it go away. Well, you said it was hungry. I right. got two simple words for you, lass. Smash it. Yeah, I'm actually with Marshall on I'm this one. I'm kind of with Marshall on this one. Fine. If it's a spawn of Rovigo, it probably just needs to be gone. Yes, actually, there is that as well. But oh, also, if, point. If, you're, if you're trying to get rid of a wild animal, feeding it is actually the worst way to try to... Yeah, because then it'll just come back wanting more. Exactly. I mean, that's how I invaded Don't the village. I mean, what? the animals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying Don't really feed big the pigeons. <laughs> well... It's probably good to know in advance, I suppose, that it's not alone. Times two, it's times not a two. a singular creature. But with that impression, um, you get the feeling that, like, again, not only are there certainly at least two of them, it's simply not a solitary creature. You don't know how many there could be. We've stumbled on a whole hive of them. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Legend says that Tony the Fire Breeder was interred beneath. Those mountains you can see out to the west. <laughs> right over there. Turns the out. gods put him there to keep his corpse in the ground. That's not a mountain. That's just a termite hive. I guess let's go find our <laughs> caravan. How do people live here? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not level one anymore. That's true. They're level five. They can fight help. goblins. That'll really help. They can fight the you. goblins. <laughs> Handsome ganker has Remember the best Remember those ghouls point. that we just went and kind of like flicked and, and, and saggle rock? Those are level five. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. No, pigeons and geese would be on Earth. They wouldn't have anything to do with Rovica. Widgeons and we So would. with, uh, That's not with a joke. that, Earth exists picking the... through yeah. the ruins of the caravan itself, you don't Space really, it's, it's all yeah, incredible damage, both from the flames and from clearly a creature of some impressive strength. Uh, one of the wagons itself looks like it was fully picked up and crashed into the ground rather than just smashed through or destroyed. No. But none of this tells you anything you didn't already really know. Yeah. Now, my we other question for you is, is go meet the caravan coming or just wait here? No, we should go we should meet go the caravan. I don't really want to stick around here. There is also no telling if the creatures that move closer to where the caravan might be. Yeah. And if the caravan actually gets delayed and doesn't stop all the way over here, we need to make sure we're staking with it. So you continue your journey. Um, it would be some two hours past this point where you would meet with the caravan lane to ensure that you linked up with them a sizable distance from the sites of the attacks as the uh, site of the two attacks were not both exactly at this oasis but the other one is not on this primary route it was somewhere not terribly far away <laughs> uh, meeting up with your group here it is a simple pair of wagons 
uh, each drawn by a pair of oxen, uh, struggling their way through the heat of the Katapeshi Desert with a slight relief that it's at least fall and, you know, you can ox load things through the desert because it's not the middle of the summer where you would just die instantly. Mm. Uh, but they are not happy creatures traipsing through the desert. This is not where oxen go, but it's what you use to pull a wagon and they don't really have particularly massive, hardy desert draft animals. So you kind of work with what you got. The Oxen Workers Union isn't a very strong presence over here. It's not. No. No. I mean, I was about to say you could just get a lot of camels, but I don't think that would work out so well. These two covered wagons are loaded with a pretty impressive amount of produce brought in uh, from neighboring Osirian. Osirian? Osirian? Osirian. Osirian. Uh, I'll go Osirian. Osirian's the people. I think Osirian is the country. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely we, sure. The place that's north of Katapesh. And uh, I've never had, I realize now, I need to say the name of the country before literally today. It's a word you've ever only ever read. And escort them uh, back down towards the south. Uh, and by the time you've met up with them, it is, again, getting into mid-afternoon, you've traveled dozens of miles from Catafesh on your camels. Uh, probably closer to 100 than to 50. And by the time that you make it back into the city, as given the attacks, they are not really want to camp for the night. Uh, the plan is to push fairly hard and make it back in the middle of the night to the city gates and to the safety therein. You are here. The off chance that things go wrong. And by off chance... <laughs> certain chance. We're here now, so certain chance. There's a map. Something. It's almost go as wrong. if you attract... Horribly detrimental things. Uh, oh, it's in the contract. Um, here, you might need one of these later. Oh, and uh, here, I take mean, these scrolls, and uh, could you cast, take this wand and cast it into my sword, please? Oh, uh, sure, what is it? <laughs> it's just a, a, a frost oh, spell. Oh, oh, wait, wait, so you give a random thing and say, drink this. Oh, she, she knows what it is. Ask. No, last time. Well, last time, yeah. And now She's you're giving it to yeah. me, not you. <laughs> no, that's the ask. difference. Now you're handing her something saying, hey, do this. Yeah. But now there's questions. Yeah, because I have, <laughs> I have to cast it. It's a wand. The work's all done for you. Yeah. The words, the what's on the wand is written on the wand. You because like any the... idiot can use a wand, right? You don't have no, to be like. No, you do. You, you, you have to use a cast spell. Like yes. Well, okay, I know scrolls oh. you have to, but I thought wands. No, no you still have to use it. Is a thing that exists for that. I could do Fair that. enough. So you would need to know something of it, but I mean the wand would be fairly intuitive. Most of the magic is stored within the rod. I, you could I, identify I, it in your sleep. Yeah, fascist. I, I also imagine that literally holding a wand with the tech magic would give you all the knowledge you need to at least cast whatever's in it. As you might not specifically card. know what's coming out of it without identifying it, but like but having a wand with the tech magic, presumably she you can do knows it. what it was she bought, so it's quicker to just say, "Hey, what is it?" That's cast fair. this on my sword for me. Sure. What is it? Oh, it's fireball. Ah! <laughs> so as you're traveling back with the caravan, uh, largely retracing your steps back to Katapesh, an hour passes on another. There's no way I can like as... try to convince the caravan master to actually camp and bunker down because we have we can make a, wall, a stone fortress for them to go they hide They have in. two wagons full of produce without a terribly long shelf life in a world that hasn't invented refrigeration on a large scale yet. How I mean, that's, that, 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 that would hold weight if other caravans carrying the same stuff didn't habitually make camp. That's fair, I suppose. Traditionally, this this journey would have one additional stop, and they would arrive in the morning. Uh, but well, we're I understand if they're like they literally too freaked out. Their to be instructions, convinced. and they have the fear that they are the ones who accepted the triple pay to attempt to do this route. Okay. I'm With the Scarlet Triad's assurances that it's fine, it was just a one-time thing. Okay, well, it was just a two-time thing. <laughs> There's no There's way it no can happen. no way it's going to happen It's an third. uncommon what are the odds? occurrence. It is I'm, such an uncommon occurrence. I'm also occurrence. shooting back a Drake Heart Mutagen. Also, um, what, what they are transporting here, their load of fruit is something that has a much shorter shelf life than many other grains and uh, other harvests they would bring in, grains and bananas. Bananas go bad so fast. I suppose they they're really bringing do. bananas. Sure, they're bringing bananas. Oh, Syrian bananas. I mean, you you got to think about it. We, we harvest bananas in tomatoes. South America and then bring them over to Florida to sell. They do get flown here. But, yeah, I mean, like, but, but, they, still, but it's still a tight time frame. The logistics there. And then they get, gas in our, they get gas in our warehouse, ripen them faster. But the... Uh, as they, they transport, many of the other shipments have been diverted away from this route because their approach has just been like, well, don't take that road, stupid. <laughs> but that adds 
two or three days to the journey, mm -hmm. something this cargo can't really afford, which okay. is why they just offered the triple pay, and they're like, we'll give you triple pay, and then, you know, maybe you won't die. <laughs> but we need business, man. Give me your fruits. That's business give me your Valerian. peaches or me, whatever you grow in a desert. Pe My cabbages. Not peaches. Not peaches. My Not peaches. And uh, as night falls, the torches and lanterns uh, are lit in the... Hands of the travelers who are following are sat in the wagon, and the lanterns hung on the sides of the two wagons. As light well. spell. And you continue along your path. It's 60 feet. It's it's pretty brilliant. Between <laughs> the wagons and the group of you, I think it's 120 at this point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Possibly. It's dim after 60, I think, is what it is, and Maybe. it goes out to 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. You, uh, you have a pretty large amount of light being cast out by the group. What are you all doing as you escort the caravan and near closer to the site of the previous attack? Reyes. Um, what is Reyes doing? Seeking, I guess. She's keeping an eye out. Looking for Zotani spawn. Yeah. <laughs> Reyes is I'm looking paranoid. for a demigod that wants to eat you. Yeah. Possibly five. Reyes is always on the lookout for things that are trying to eat him. How about you, Rishin? Uh, well... Zotani is like you're drawing somewhat near the region, like within 30 minutes of this area of the previous attack. So yeah, so zone. Roisin's basically drinking a juggernaut mutagen every well, is, hour. Oh, I was gonna say, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. You have enough to keep doing that. Yes. Your 11th level alchemy. <laughs> um, and uh, it seems silly to keep my shield up when it's so unlikely that I'm the one that is going to get pancaked. So she'll be seeking as well. Fair enough. Resume? Um, I'm going to be uh, sneaking. Sneaky, geeky like. You can hang out sort of uh, near the back, a little closer towards the wagons. Mm -hmm. Hoping that they come from the direction that the wagons are shielding you from and not the side that's open. Yes. But doing your best to remain hidden. How about you, Trishik? So I have an interesting question for you. We've never used this one. Okay. Erase tracks. The, the, I forget what the exact name of it is. Is a rogue is the thing you have? No, it's one of your it's exploration oh, activities. Activity. Activity. <clears throat> Cover your tracks, right? Cover your um, tracks. Yeah, it's one of the trained survival ones that you can do. I am trained in survival. Uh, yeah, at this point... So with the combination of that and foil senses, can I try and hide the scent of the fruit? Trained cover tracks for an entire caravan. Just for the, the but stuff you just want inside the of scent. them. Yeah, just the scent. I will give it to you. <clears throat> I will give it to you. Oh, uh, one more thing. Perfumes. I'm giving um, <laughs> I'm giving us all factory obfuscators. Uh, for the next eight hours, people can't smell us. That's well, seriously? Well, it's a passive check. There's a, there's a DC, but yeah. There's a DC, but yeah. It doesn't work for Roshi. Well, yeah. I don't think it'll work for me either, in all honesty. I already have Alchemy it. is amazing. I already have that. The alchemy will totally work for you. Challenge accepted. That's just built <laughs> in. Marshall, what, are you scouting then? Are you the man who is ready to... Uh, why do you have to keep asking an obvious question to the barbarian? you stupid questions. <laughs> You're obviously going to be scouting. You just want to fight things. So I'll be avoiding notice actually. and covering tracks. <laughs> okay. So you and Resme sneaking somewhat by the wagons. Probably, I'd say, about 20 feet behind the rest of the party. Um, but the three of you, are you out in front of the caravan? Are you with the caravan or? I mean, I'd probably want to be actually out toward the front of the caravan, like not too far away because if the thing comes from the side, yeah. I need to be able to run back and get it. I would it. imagine that the three of you are maybe 15, 20 feet in front of the uh, the lead oxen because if the thing is going to jump out and attack, uh, you have the, the odds of provoking it yourself and not on the wagons. And if it does hit the wagons, that's like one round you can be there. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's 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 the goal. It's like I can get there in a round, and if they come from behind, Resume and Raz are back there, bravely right. taking up the spread. rear. So you guys are, uh, you get to play the, fill the board with new things game. There is, I'm pretty sure you can search wagon. There's probably a wagon you can throw on there. Um, definitely not. Ark and Forge has a great number of cool things for on the fly. This is your test. You get the on-the-fly map creativity test. But uh, you, the group of you, 10, 15 feet out in front of the caravan, and Resme and Trishik at the caravan 20 feet behind, probably maybe 40, 50 feet behind the, the whole of the party, uh, leaving a sizable distance from the monster that sounds like it's really bad to be close to. Yeah. Yeah. And as you work your way south through uh, the darkness, light only from your own, uh, your own lanterns, your own torches, as well as the uh, light spell that Roshin has or anybody else that may have duplicated as well. Uh, the road passes within 
two dozen feet of the oasis itself. So it would only be like five squares out that it passed by, running north to south. Um, this is... we're, we're manipulating on the fly for the situation as it occurs. There you go. Oh, look at this. Woo. This is the power of Arkin Forge. It's bringing me we back. We can just throw a caravan together immediately. You guys probably can't see it yet, but he's making a caravan. He's I'm a getting Oregon job. Trail vibes. I put the third one in the back. Yeah, there you go. Look at this. Look at this land. Look at him, map. I'm just watching the magic happen on the screen in Where's front of ox? me because there's wagons involved now, which I probably should have put on the map when I was putting it together, but I didn't have that thought until it was too late. <laughs> Scoot Oof. the whole thing back about 20 feet. Put Roshin, Marshall, and Rez vaguely about where that front wagon was. And then put Rashik and Resme towards the back. Because as you got closer to the actual site of the previous attack, some of the, the oxen would start to protest a bit. Uh, not fully bucking, but throwing their heads back, snorting a, a little bit generally unhappy with the progression of the situation. Uh, perhaps sensing things that happened before. Uh, you Would you still be astride your camels? Because mm -hmm. the speed of the caravan is not, it is like you could keep up with it on foot at this point. I'd be on foot. I would be on foot as well. Yeah. You would, yeah, you wouldn't need the speed of the camel to keep up with the caravan. Okay. They could be like, they, tied they, to it. Ro yeah. Roshin is rather uncomfortable riding camels. <laughs> they have a handler that has several other camels as well as a pair of horses. I was about to say, um, I would, that I would are also be included. Occasionally yeah. ridden by some of the escort, uh, sometimes are. Uh, just kept in, are also part of what they're bringing into Katapesh. Okay. So they could definitely just, the handlers could take yours as well. Perfect. That's not a problem. But as they start to become a little bit upset, uh, one of the horses actually rearing up entirely. Seekers, make me a perception check. Oh, not me. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty and thirty-one. Not a seeker. You're scouting. That's not seeking. Uh, he's he's <laughs> ready to roll initiative. The, uh, you two look around here, and your eyes are towards the oasis. As this horse kind of rears up and whinnies, you're a little distracted. I mean, both of you, it's a pretty loud, piercing noise, the relative quiet of the trundling wood of the wagons. You kind of look back towards that. Before, behind you, you see a massive red glow as you hear an eruption of earth and a shattering noise like an entire warehouse of pottery being crushed. <laughs> Whipping back around to see whether it is a Zotani spawn or no. One massive elephant-sized spiky beetle with vents placed askew down its sides and smoke erupting out from the hole of the ground it's emerged from. And I am going to need you guys to roll me some initiative, yeah. Ah! Gerkaha! Everyone's going to get plus three. Whee! Say it so kind of just Gerkaha. I mean, no I could, stress. I could shout it out again, <laughs> but I've been waiting for it. Battle cry. Raz is on edge. Super duper on edge. Taking that out of here. Does that in scouting stack? That in scouting stacks. It's a status bonus cool. and a circumstance. Okay. Oh, cool. okay. That means. Wow, then it stacks with my item, too. Are you if you an have item an bonus item to... that gives you initiative, then yeah. Um, although, how initiative? far away are you Trey guys? Drake Hart. Oh, the Drake Hart does. Neat. I think you all are out of the range. So Resme and Trishik don't, would not get the that call. Yes. Okay, but, okay. but Marshall, get it not only are you getting it, but as you look at the bug on fire, you realize that you once barbecued bugs, and they were very good. <laughs> well, this is already on fire, so it's your time to prepare for dinner. Dark Heart, 1985. Okay. Dark Heart, you know me so well. Um, All right, so I'm going to do a backward style this time. This is a 44. Woo. Marshall, what did you get? So I'm not getting Roshin's You do plus. get Roshin's yeah. Okay, yeah. so in that case, I get a 43. Uh, I'll be so right there, Trishik. 47. 47. Oh, my Trishik label fell no. out of the back. Oh, glue I can't it. see the front. I don't know who's on the front. I don't get the art. I just get names. Raz. 41. 41. This is a tight nugget so far. Roshin. 37. So far. And Resme. Please don't laugh at me, but I just forgot what I rolled. Does any, did anyone see it? 
I legitimately don't remember. Chat. That's, why I, that's why I pick it up and put it down. On I'm whatever so I sorry. Just roll it again, I guess. I'm so sorry. Bug distracting. Hey, a nine. It's a nine. Okay, that's going to be a 38. 38. All right, here we are. Battle cry. You are very much within range. Oh, you yeah. can absolutely battle cry this creature. Rah. Battle glare, really. It's the general anger. Intimidating prowess, regardless. Uh, that will be a 40 altogether. 40 will succeed. Ha ha! That will come out frightened one. Get spooked. And look who's first. Yeah, Trishik. That's flat-footed to me anyways. You are, yeah. You are back at the wagon here. You are some distance back, certainly within shoot the bow range. Well, you know what uh, we're going to do. What are you going to do? We're going to shoot the bow. You're going to shoot the bow? I thought you were going to take a selfie. Now, this thing erupts from the ground. It's focused clearly on the front wagon and the three defenders in front of it. Unfortunately for it, upon leaping out of the ground, it is going to... I forgot what my attack modifier is, I believe. It's a 29 for my bow. That I mean, sounds us. plausible. Yeah. So it's going to take a 37 to its flat-footed fright. 37 will hit its flat-footed fright. We nice. needed all of those things. I rolled an 8. That is exactly its flat-footed fright. Nice. It is a fairly large beast, and it does not strike you as particularly swift. Uh, especially as it hasn't noticed you. Striking it from this, and it's kind of just a giant flaming beacon in the night. It's very easy to target, actually. Well, I don't know how fast these are, but it's going to take 2d6 extra sneak attack. Okay. And it's going to have a minus 10 to its movement. Okay. This thing has enough various holes, these strange ventilations, and these almost, again, geyser-like growths along its shell, that it's quite, honestly, it's not tent protective. You can sort of shoot right on through. It's got a bunch of pre-designed shooting holes. For 30 damage. 30 damage. And then we're gonna plank it again. Boop. That is another eight, which would so be five lower, good, yeah. so. The second arrow, it, though, glancing off of its uh, carapace. And then we're going to sneak 30 feet closer. Okay. Uh, that 30 Probably. feet forward is exactly right. where Marshall is, so where do you want to go? Well, uh, were you there by the second wagon, or were you by the third wagon when you started? It was by, uh, there was by the second wagon, so they could be on the screen for oh. convenience sake. So, uh, yeah, 30 feet would put you exactly on Marshall. I'll sneak 30 feet, like, kind of out into the right to get onto the south side of the... Uh, North side of the oasis? North side of the oasis. Yeah, you can get like, like right up forward to the, and over. Yeah, to the, like the shrubbery on the very edge of it right there. The shrubbery. That would and not be enough to provide cover for most people, but Trashik is not most people. That's a 42 to sneak. Then you are perfectly fine. Uh, this thing, taking the arrow, uh, it, it doesn't immediately reactively roar or anything, though it does make some strange almost chittering screeches as it comes out. But it rocks a bit from the arrow and opening its mouth seemingly to cry out in pain. It's less it's than it's lava. and more an, a literal blast of magma. Red hot lava jettisons out in a spray, uh, coating Marshall, Roisin, Raz, and the unfortunate oxen pulling the front wagon who are very much going to be unalive. After what? exposure to that, the front wagon as well would catch fire. Uh, Question, but I'm gonna Lord. need Sorry. answer. Is that considered a breath weapon, and does it trigger my necklace? It's not a dragon. It's not a dragon. Oh, it has to be dragon. It has to be a dragon. Never mind. It is a breath weapon, but it's not a dragon. I, 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 uh, but I, I am gonna reflex save from the three of you in the front. Reflex, you say? Thirty-eight. I would. I'm gonna. Is that a twenty? Cash no, in this here hero point. points. Good. That link and I'm not gave reading. me. Because I was full. So that's a. Uh... I'll take it. Thank you, Link. Thank you, Link. Man. That is significantly way better. better. So res. 38. 38 will fail. Whee! Are we surprised? Rushing. Wait. 40. No, it's frightened one. 38 will succeed. Whee! The most valid battle cry has ever had. 42. 42 will succeed? 41. 41 will succeed. So all of you. <laughs> will be taking half. Roast, wow. Roast Power of fright. Power of friendship. That is a great fright. Not There's a reason why I'm scary, fire. guys. Um, each of you are going to take 23 points of fire damage. 
Okay, so minus resistance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone's 15. got some fire resistance at this point. And 23 my... minus whatever your assorted fire resistances are. Literally everyone. Uh, but this magma as it sprays out is unlike the magma you'd seen back in Cobbler. It does not appear to actually be lava so much as some biological fluid this thing secretes that mm. is similar enough to it. It's very thin. Uh, it's very runny. It's not quite watery. It's like but a it's mucus not almost? The thick, chunky, molten rock that actual magma is. That sticks to you. Yeah, but yeah. this does not stick to you, but it does almost soak you and immediately set the three of you aflame. Mm. Um, it you are, spits alchemist fire. It kind of spits alchemist fire. All three of you are on fire. Oh, lovely. Oh, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it is going to rush forward. Up to be diagonally adjacent from Marshall, rushing up to 10 feet out from Roshin. It's moss still open. It's mandibles opening horizontally with rows of saw-like teeth on the top of the bottom of this chitinous uh, opening. As you can just see this burning fire behind this glow. Token? It rushes out. Oh, yeah, token. Yeah, There's we got a token, good sir. Did my 10 foot thing make a difference? <laughs> I'm like um, a cat. It's like. <laughs> it, seemed to be, it, it is notably a little slowed, but it's fast enough that it could still do that with I the minus you. 10. It's a, it's, I was hoping to again, impede it a little. Speed by virtue of size, really. It's hmm. just big enough that it gets out it there. It's big steps. Marshall. Oh, and it will bleed for a d6. Five. It will continue bleeding. It takes five. Whee. Okay, so I got the first things first. Mega Marshall. You got the room. Mm -hmm. There's no ceiling. Yeah, you're in the middle of the desert. We're in the middle of the desert. Yee. Oh, you can make them on fire. We have little fires. I'm on uh, fire chiding uh, even more on fire. Okay. I'm going to look down at it, considering it's puny compared to me now. Boo. Scared of death. Okay. Scared of death. Uh, make me your intimidate check. Holy crap. Uh, that is a 46. 46. <laughs> Critically succeed. Make oh. a fortitude save. But it is incapacitates, so it gets plus one on the fortitude save. But it's not incapacitate on the effect itself, right? So scared to death. It's frightened three. So scared to death is it now has to make a fortitude save versus right. But like the the initial intimidation check is not incapacitate. Correct. The no. critical failure or the critical success effect is incapacitate. So it is. Let me look. At it. Well, it, it doesn't make a save on. against it. It's a, it's his intimidate check. Is so it? it's save like potentially. Isn't there a secondary roll? Yeah, there is a secondary yes. roll. It has to make a, his... a fortitude save versus his intimidate DC yes. upon which it gets the plus one. I'll learn how to speed the two of you out. Uh, we'll just keep using it and make you look it up. And yeah, it yeah I'll just Google it every time. His until role is completely separate okay. from the role. Yeah, you intimidate check. You critically succeed. It's frightened two, not three. It's frightened two and fleeing. Huh? Ah, I thought it was just three. What? Are you sure you're reading the right thing? Scared to death. Feet 15. Makes a fortitude save against your intimidation DC. No, the entire thing, it is actually full incapacitation. So it is a oh. regular success, so it is frightening. Oh, too. yeah, because you wouldn't be able to make something more powerful than you flee. That makes sense. It's not the... Uh... Okay, I was about to say. I'll learn it someday. So it's frightened, too. And you have one extra. Bonk. Bonk. That is a 43. 43 will hit. Uh, so that's going to be 3d12 plus 1d6 of sound plus 25. Bonk. Go big red, go. Rectangle smack. Well, it's a big red right now. Oh, big red smack. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, big red. You have Sonic on all of it now. It doesn't matter yep. rectangle, right? Rectangle's not a separate one. I'm still in the, the past when rectangle is a separate weapon. Uh, so that is going to be, give me a second, math. 45 altogether. 45 damage. And as you hit it... Uh, Big red cleaving into the spine of this thing, this spiked, almost stony hide, uh, snapping through it, a gush of more of this magma-like fluid washes out over you. Make me a reflex save. Oh no, I'm clumsy too. Uh, nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh. already 
on fire. Oh, he doesn't no. care. What are you going to do? Make oh, him more on fire? Yeah. I'm so clumsy. And then I got to roll for the on fire thing. And then right? you roll a d20 to see if the fire goes out because it is just a flat. I rolled a three, so I'm yeah, probably on fire. Yeah, still on fire. What's your fire resistance? Eight. Eight. Um, you take four points of fire damage after that. Oh, no. And then Raz. Um, Raz doing the only thing Raz can think of right now. Um, Hypercognition. <laughs> No. <laughs> he starts to shout. Wow. What? No? He can't. La la. Um, Eldorf and cast Wall of Force diagonally to block off the wagons from this thing. That would put you on the backside of that. That would put me on the backside okay, of the thing. I don't sure care. Where it's like that. I'm okay with this. Darn. I'm, I'm darn. Me. Oh, man. Darn. Oh, man. Darn. Oh, man. So, Wall of Force, uh, you see a brief ripple uh, in the light of this beast now. Uh, much brighter than the lanterns and the spells you had before. This magma, and the burning giant dwarf man. You see a brief ripple and flash of energy uh, as it's cast, but nothing, of course. Yeah, and shout out to Resume behind. There's a wall. Be careful. Nothing remaining visible afterward. Make me a check to see if you are still on fire. And what is your fire resistance? 10. 10. Me. You will Ten. take no damage. Uh, roll a 20. Then you're also not on fire. He's fire. You can't catch on him. You're too resistant to fire. He's too flame I retardant. Have a bigger ring. I should get me a bigger I ring. I told y'all to ring. get a bigger ring when we were shopping. Did you? Yes. Resume. I wasn't listening. I'll never listen to me. I'm um, sorry. You're just wrong so often. I mean, mine goes up. <laughs> mine goes up with level. He's got the scaly. Uh, Resume uh, will look around and uh, Allegro, and cast haste on everybody. Uh, oh, oh. with on reach. You and everybody, you okay? Haste on everybody. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, everybody gets them fast, and that's reaction. So yep. everyone speeds up in this battle here. Roshin, not the fastest lady on the earth, but she's But here. a little faster now. A little faster now. Yeah. You get the first, hey, just being slow means you get to take four actions in your first turn. There you go. <laughs> Easy. Um, so uh, Roshin's going to uh, use a hasted stride to go and flank the frightened two thingamabobber. Okay. Uh... Action one is quicken cast heroism on myself at level six because I can do that now, which is pretty sweet. That's pretty good. Um, second action is going to be to hit it. Nice. Frightened two and flanked. Frightened two oh, flanked. Snake. 13 on the die goes to a 42. 42 hits. 42 hits. Um, does the good damage work on it? Uh, good damage ex- absolutely works on it. Okay. This is the I was about most to say, I'm chaotic sure evil creature it sounded that really could possibly evil. ever exist. This is like the essence of a chaotic evil spawn. And uh, as that hits, um, the um, frost spell that Resume threw in the sword is going to burst out and do a little bit of extra frost damage, possibly a little extra more. Probably, probably a pretty good hit on that frost. All right. So that's gonna be 11, so 17, so another 8 is gonna go to 25 plus spell modifier damage goes to 30 plus curse boosted melee damage goes to 38. Oracle. (laughs) (laughs) Is that your final answer, sir? Final answer is... 38. 38 damage. Do you not have a dial for that? <laughs> More like... I don't know how I build one. 58 damage. Woo! As nice. the cold from this ray of frost lashing out from your sword uh, actually freezes over and shatters a section of this thing's carapace it, in an instant becoming brittle and falling away, uh, revealing a almost glowing fleshier interior that radiates heat out towards you. Um, one action left, or was activating the spell? You, you still have your haste. No, haste hasted haste stride, stride you hit it. I think activating spell storm runes a free action. Yeah, you quicken haste, so you got one left, I believe. Uh, yeah, I've got one left. Um, uh, no, actually, uh, she's gonna reach out towards Marshall, uh, almost sort of like blowing a kiss, uh, Gramaha, and uh, sort of a uh, even around Marshall's large size, sort of an outline of Roshin protectively crouching over him. Thanks, uh, we'll kind of flick her up a bit. <laughs> and, uh, really embracing that you role. two are on fire. <laughs> Is your fire resistance going? Wait. Shield stride. Hit it. Heroism. 
Can't do it. It's two actions to cast. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, right. Sorry. Um, oh. I'll hit it again. Hit it again. Hit it again. Hit Why it again. Well? What's your fire resistance? I'll just roll this while you're doing Five. that. Five. Thirty-eight, frightened two, flanking. That hits it. Woo! Uh, spell's been expended, unfortunately, but still you did still its get job. Slap it normal. I still get the it does the good normal. damage. Is definitely landing. It is hurting this thing. It does not appear to be particularly weak cool. to it, uh, but it is hurting it. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Look at you doing damage. Yeah. Look at you Look putting at numbers on the board. Thing, it seems to be almost supernaturally resilient because you're all laying into it. It shows no signs of slowing down. In fact, only burning hotter and getting more infuriated. Uh, you will take five fire damage through your resistance, okay. and then you can roll to see if that ends. Um, and as Trishik... Uh, roll a 20. <laughs> you're not on fire either. As Trishik readies to do whatever it is Trishik do, the ground beneath you trembles once more. And from the, near the center of the oasis, a second Zotani spawn erupts. Oh no, there's the two of them. Earth. Two of them? Ah. I would have never guessed. It's like we knew. Um, and it is actually, I rolled one lower, so it's going to be 43 in time, Marshal, and we get the death chunk. I even rolled them separately, but we just got the death chunk anyway. Mm -hmm. um, as this thing erupts from the ground uh, in a much more aggressive display, this one seemingly more somehow agitated as it flings embers of bits of molten sand and a spray around it as it emerges. Everybody make me a will save. Oh boy. Yeah, including resume. You are also rich. What kind of effect is this? Uh, this is a uh, emotion, fear, mental, if you got stuff for any of those. I'm going to go ahead and spend a hero point then he's going to grit his teeth on that one. I ain't as scared. If you got anything that for fear, this worse. is an emotion fear mental effect. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> that was I do not. Worse. Oh well. Be out of the way. What do you got? Will, 28. 28, you are frightened too. Rasheen? 39. You are frightened one. Resume? 35. You are frightened two. Rasheen? 30. 30, you're frightened two. Marshall? 26. For Will's day break. Yes. Oh. What does this do on a critical failure? <laughs> Hold on. Now you're fleeing. I uh, must Google. This was, is a generic was 39 ability. Is, was 39 a normal success? Yes. Uh, oh, so you critically succeed. succeed. So you are not frightened at all. I was about to say, um, I don't think. Nope. That That's a different ability. This that, is just a generic bestiary ability. Uh, Archives of Nethys is down. That's fantastic. It is neither an auditory or visual effect. Oh, uh, Archives of Nethys is down. How do I Google this? <laughs> I was thinking of terrifying I'm gonna resistance, but I don't think that does. I'm going to say Frightened 4. You're Frightened 4 is what I pick. Uh, Trishik. It's what you pick. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know what the heck it does. Here's a It's Frightful Presence. It's a generic ability. It does something on a critical failure. I think it's 0, 1, 2, 4 is the basic okay. will save. I'm pretty sure. So it's just minus 4 to my stuff. Yeah, uh, it's just minus 4 to your everything. Well, I'm gonna. But that will degrade by one at the end of each turn, of course. I'm gonna sneak to behind the one that's currently being fought. And I'm gonna poke it. Uh, so just to double check. Between the two of them is where you're going. Yes. Okay. I'm just I'm just confirming that's where you wanted to go is between the two mm -hmm. the Tony's spawn. Because I have perfect distraction. That's fair. That's fair. Could be very distracting. Hmm. Can't so, he? I'm gonna poke the one that has already been injured with my claws. Four. You're correct about the frightened four. What do you got, Shadi? A thirty-three. Thirty-three I is very you, poorly. Yeah, creep over. That one is going to miss. You have uh, two actions left. Uh -huh. One plus one. I'm gonna give it a swipe again. Because I've got my haste to overcome to get over the terror. Here. Yeah. Got to prove to myself these things aren't that scary, even I though they're scared. I'm frightened godly I scared. things. I rolled one higher. That's one action left. Is it perfect distraction? Perfect distraction. I'm going to sneak back to where I was. Back up to the and north side of the oasis. There's going to be a clone of me. As you there. drop the log with a robe on it, <laughs> some green painted scales <laughs> on the front. And the. Uh, the distraction is going to pretend to be intimidating the one that just came out. 
Oh, goodness. Literally <laughs> trying to get its attention. That's fair. Turn the log toward it. Just doing back. Uh, the one in the middle of all of this is going to reach out its jaws open for the... It's got a target that is larger than it is, and this is the clear direction uh, that it's it's just going to kind of turn. It doesn't, as it attacks, it, it's just sort of lashing out reactively. Actually, I guess you stab the hell out of it. It would probably bite at you just defensively. It's going to go for Rasheen. It's going to turn down to you and try to put the once. En entirety Woo! of Rasheen inside its mouth. Uh, reactive shield block. Do you have the two part thing? Uh, I haven't used a reaction, so I, I can reactive to raise the shield. Oh, I used a reactive shield block. I thought you were like, did you get a thing where you have two reactions? So now, I did get can... a thing, it's just not applicable right now. Oh, uh, fair but enough. But it will be, I suspect, as soon as it bites me. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's fair. Shield block doesn't work yet, it's gotta hit you first. Okay, he gonna mulch with his big old flaming jaws and uh, kind of somewhat startled, perhaps. Uh, by your <laughs> the swiftness of which you snap up your shield reflexively. She's been uh, hit so much. It opens its mouth just a little bit wider before it bites down for a 35. Uh, I did not roll better. 35. Roisin is so used to getting, like, chomped on by bigger monsters that she just spreads out that block and shoves it back. And then it is going to snap at you again a second time. Much better. Four. Okay, minus five. For a 44. Uh, 44, a normal hit. Normal hit. Uh, second reaction, quick shield block. There it is. There that it is. was the thing I was asking. If that was the thing I was asking. If it was that thing. The, the one thing. You have the thing. Have the, you're adorable. I'm so shield, shieldy. I mean, you're kind of the thing. It's going to munch you. Uh, for just a normal hit, it is going to be 28. Not damage, I'm frightened. There yeah, 28 points of piercing damage. And just going inside this thing's maw, you, the radiant heat sets you aflame once more. <laughs> and it has got these mandibles locked around your armor. You are also grabbed. Ah, that just means it's grabbed too. It is a two-way street. <laughs> <Cool. laughs> I've got it where I want it. Uh, it was uh, how much? It was 28? twenty-eight. Twenty-eight points of piercing damage. All right, so minus shield you fool. hardness. You have flat-footed yourself for the rogue. So I finally took non-temporary hit point damage. Yeah. And every time I sort my cards, it gets worse. I don't know where the grabbed cards are. It doesn't get better when I try to sort them. So I'm like, oh, I'll make this quick reference. Yeah, did deck. you make the and quick reference? It just reference means deck? I have to look through them twice because I need to find the the the, uh, the quick reference thing. It's not in its regular spot. So you grab, you burst into flames. That's that thing's three actions. Such is your life. Uh, Zotani spawned the second as it rises and starts to uh, charge in. It's gonna go for the giant on fire dwarf. It's very obvious. Uh, but as it closes in, it opens its mouth, and it, too, releases a massive spray of this thin magma, uh, which it thinks is hitting Jashik. It's not. Uh, it is. It's like, what's your reach? 15? 15. Yeah, it, it's in range. It's a, well, it's a, it's a breath weapon. Breath weapons do not provoke, no. Breath weapons are natural attacks. Oh, no, no. manipulate. No. Uh, so the two of you, because it's actually just you two now, yep. thanks to your wall, as you see the splash across in front of you, wow. your reflex saves. Oh, Save boy. the ox. Save the produce. <laughs> You make delicious. Save delicious. my face. <laughs> Save my face. Um. Oh yeah, and I'm frightened four too. You're frightened four, but minus four. Plus minus two because I'm clumsy. Those are both status. They don't stack. Oh, they don't. No. Okay. Well, that's good not... news for you, friend. I don't know if it's good news when it's still going to be a critical failure. It definitely helps, at least. What do you got? It's a twenty-one. No, I'm sorry, not twenty-one. Look it's a that. twenty-six. Okay, like 21 almost double critical fails. Like, that's <laughs> concerning. 26 will critically fail. Yeah, um, I, rolled, I rolled bad. Roshin? I have a 35. 35 will regular fail. Um, so this time, it's very exceptionally spicy. So, interestingly, because he didn't directly interact with my clone and he used a ranged attack, I don't think he gets an automatic, like, this isn't real. I guess the clone takes damage. I think he's a beast, and I don't that, think he yeah. cares. I, so uh, Roshin is going to take 60 points of fire damage. Marshall is going to take 120 points of fire damage. Yep. Uh, so Marshall's going to take 60, and I'm going to take 60 more because shield others up. You did not get enough damage. You didn't get enough. Oh, you're right. You almost got. I to almost, use got it. It so... I almost got it off. I almost got to prevent damage with it. So you said 120, 120 right? 120 minus your fire. So 112. 
And then uh, yeah, you are also, oh, Marshall is now a super on fire because critically failing is going to double the amount of on fire that you are. You awesome. are already on fire from being grabbed. It is the same level of on fire. They don't stack. And then it moves to there. Uh, moving to there will provoke. So you will get to swing at it now. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Look at Marshall. Trying for. <laughs> Look at Marshall's uh, fucking now. Rolled a 19 and it's still big red, so. That's, that's like a 15. I'm pretty sure it's still going to hit, realistically. It's got a crit. It's going to crit because I have keen, keen, sir. Ooh, well, you must have. Yeah, is that, that would hit and the knight's going to make a keen. Yep, you're going to crit him. You crit me, I crit you. The, the rolls of D12s. Yeah, it's, it's, it's low, but it's still big <laughs> enough. All right, so it's uh, the entire map is fire. <laughs> Should be 70. Yeah, you're right, 70. Wait till you see my next that's, the, that's doubled? Yeah, that's doubled. The well of the D12s. A tail as old as every other monster that I run. <laughs> but now, Marshall, it's your whole turn. Oh, I dropped one of my D12s. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's scoop. Yeah. We only have so many guys on the table. Yeah. We need a lot of them. <laughs> oh, he has all of them. All right, well, Marshall is not very happy about this situation, and he's uh, a little spooked. Very spooked. I take it the other thing is that these things are actually immune well, to fire. Well, uh, yeah, obviously immune yeah. to fire. Yeah. <laughs> Double deep fried battle potato. Oh. It's got expertly baked by the Zatani spawn magma. Yep. So. Maybe medicine check. Not 20 on it. So. All right. Expertly baked. 4d8 plus 10. I'm going to need it. You said 48, right? 48, yep. I only have two D8s on me, so I'm just going to Dragonic Soul, yeah, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to roll two and double it. That's what it's always supposed to be. Oh, we okay. just don't do that because so we're like, a bunch of dice is so fun. Dragonic Soul, 221. Spawn of the Destroyer God, how can I not? Back to three villain points. Hate you. I mean, I understand. All right, so I get 32 hit points back from that one potato, which is not terrible. Pretty good. 22 and 48 is pretty good. And nice. then I'm going to psych up and give myself... Uh, Let's see, eight plus five. Twelve. So twelve. So twelve. No, 12 if it's eight plus five, it's thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Sixty. Yeah. So I'm gonna give myself sixteen temporary eight. Thirty points. What? Fifty. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this axe at somebody. Stop <laughs> plus one action. Stop, stop bullying. <laughs> Let the man do his math. Let me do my I math. Say as I also I said a um, color. <laughs> what does that have to do with math? Well, I'm one gonna. Plus one left. Yep, you see one the one that one. just emerged is definitely bearing down on you, whereas the original one is Well, I'm going to try and finish sheet. off the original in front of me. It actually looks pretty well. It's uh, I, you, I, You've struck I, it pretty well, but this thing is, is seems seemingly unstoppable. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to attempt yeah, to finish off the one You can also stop it via murder. Like that's, that's I mean, the one possible. that's flanked and still scared. That's, it is still frightened one. It is still flanked. The fear doesn't negate from my attack roll, right? It sure does, buddy. Yeah. Oh, it does? Minus four. <sighs> that's so... Oh. Frightened hurts. Frightened is rough. That's why we really like putting it on. Yeah, frightened's a tough one. Uh, the the one stuck between them bled for three. And so what is that? A thirteen minus four. And stop bleeding. <sighs> for now. Thirty nine, on the one that's flanked and. Oops. Is that with your minus four? Yep. That will hit. Nice. That's all that matters. You're in there. Fear ain't gonna stop you. And as you do that math there, Raz, for playing the objective and protecting the carts, and your face. Uh, a hero point. Rasheen, for coming prepared, a hero point. Both of these from Ghost of Azan. Nice. Thank you, Ghost. Thank you. Uh, 41 slashing sound damage. Pretty good hit. And with my hasted action, I'm going to bonk him again for minus five. I expect nothing different. Yep. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. That's a 16 on the die, so minus, well, 9 in reality. So that will be uh, 35, so I doubt that's going to hit. 35 is not going to hit. Okay, and then I got to roll to see if I'm still on fire. Yep, you roll to see if you're still on fire. You are. I rolled a 13. Still on fire. Still on fire. Yay. You guys are really bad at Wait. this. I haven't dropped hat. It was in my hat. Well, I guess I went to another dimension. I went to another freaking plane of existence. Yeah, I the plane of Raz. Any th today. Today. Uh, everyone else is dropping all the dice for me. Uh, it's going to be 18 points of fire damage minus whatever your resistance is. Okay, I so can't keep track of everybody's. Uh, Raz. So no, it's fun. Um, and I'm frightened too. I'm. La la. <laughs> Do another wall of force, this time separating the one big one from everyone else. So, like a horizontal wall of force? It's going to go from. 
horizontal to you, vertical to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I guess yeah, vertical, yeah. yeah. Well, bisecting the map. Bisecting Separate the map, them. yes. Fair enough. But Trushik is in the Thunderdome now. Trushik is you, another wall of not force. Not you can see him, but like... I just yelled that out because I assume he's hiding somewhere. And then as my hasted action, All right, hasted action. I'm going to dig down. Because you are desert What's your burrows? 15. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. Oh my god! There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. Good luck! <laughs> <laughs> I think that I just look over and just see his tail disappear in his <laughs> hand of like five feet, and then I'm gonna move to the other side. I'm digging under the wall. Dig of course. He's digging under the wall! He's everybody's neighbor's dog! I love it! <laughs> I'm gonna so vomit. Move me about yeah, 10 feet right. down, just on the other side Perfect. of the wall. Yep. You call your neighbor's dog a rat. Oh my god. Resume. That's you. amazing. And I stay there. <laughs> Five feet underground. Five feet underground. Safe. Uh. Sand doesn't conduct heat at all, so. It's... Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's not going to get baked under there. Well, it's not going to get solidified. I'm going to use my plus one uh, to move up closer to the wall. Okay. Okay, good. Are you also going to dig under the wall? <laughs> uh, Unless you have a feet that says you don't leave a tunnel, you leave a tunnel. There is literally a visible tunnel in the sand where you can see Raz burrowing under the wall. She could follow you. Yeah, she does not need a burrow speed. That's fine. You leave a, a trail behind you. Do it. Uh, Do it. <laughs> I don't know how any of this works, so I'm just digging. <laughs> I'm playing I'm playing map maker. Ravella Marctorum! And uh, Resme will uh, send out a vision to all of you of uh, what the monsters are going to do. Uh, do you have in the to next... be able to see me to give me that? I do not. Okay. I you have to, just have to be with. You target the monster. I'm targeting yeah, it's the monster. Targeting the monster. It's not any of you. It's just tar which one are you targeting? I'm targeting uh, the one that I see is surrounded by everybody. Yeah, the one that's getting the crap eaten out of it. That makes she sense to me. She sees you. Um, uh, that leaves you a whole action is... left, I believe. No, I have two, oh, two actions. Because that's only one action spell, right? Two actions left. I'm guessing. That and was true, uh, right? that was super true strike. Yeah. In yeah. Kentum. And she will turn into fire and uh, become a fire, an entire fiery body before this she time. goes through that hole. This is the time that she casts fiery body and does not immediately try to dismiss so it. This is the time. I as, believe. as Resume is casting that spell, I can hear her through my tunnel hole. I don't have to have line of sight for her. I'm going to use my reaction to accompany her. So I'm going to use a spell slot instead of her using her spell slot because her spell slots are a lot more valuable than oh. my spell slots. Hey. So accompany lets me to take a performance check when someone near me casts a spell. Okay. Um, it is against their very high DC for the allies level. Very high DC is plus five. So, okay, so DC 40. It's a known DC. Okay. Cool. It's actually pretty tough. But it's the very high DC. It is a very level. high tough. So natural 20. <laughs> Hey, very Do you nice. even what, know? What's that? What is that? So you just hear, as you're, comp as you're <laughs> casting and casting your soul, you just hear a little trumpet blast from the tunnel. <laughs> and instead of your magic being expended from your body, your spell just goes off for free. Oh, so, that felt so weird. What level spell was that? Uh, seven. Cool. He's not going to use oh that. Oh my god, I feel... I kind of want cheese now. I feel like you have a rat inside you. <laughs> there, rat. There's two oh. rats. <laughs> there's two rats inside of you. <laughs> one wants cheese. The other wants cheese. Yeah, <laughs> they all want cheese. This is what happens. We give you all Norse Foundry dice, and literally just everybody rolls twenties all the time. But I'm also rolling Norse Foundry dice, and this is crap. Anyway, it's the power. Oh, what a great fun! <laughs> Norse Foundry benefits the players. It benefits the players. All right. Uh, okay, I murder you enough. So I mean, this is uh, that doesn't get much better than this. So. Um, you are grabbed? I'm grabbed, <laughs> that's true. But you're plus one but and I'm, you roll twice. I, yeah, it's frightened one, it's flanked and grabbed. I'm gonna roll twice. Um, she's going to- uh, Flanked and grabbed are the same thing. If yeah, yeah, yeah but, but like like it's extra not going anywhere. <laughs> that's fair. It's um, holding on to you. I was actually getting ready to throw an eclipse burst and then like literally like True Sheik ran in between them as far as I can tell and then a wall of force when I was separating them. So I'm like, all right, well that's not gonna happen. Uh, but then this happened, it's great. Um, so uh, uh, it's fine. she's going to raise her sword into the air where it's going to kind of okay. glow with crimson light, uh, let go of the shield, um, and grab it two-handed and bring it down in a big overhanded two-handed sweep on this thing. Give me a slide check. Adjusting. Huh, that is technically Rip what will somatic. happen. Yeah, that's... Oh. See if you can get around to two-hand your sword while it's got a hold of you. 
Uh, it's an 11. You'll do it. All, All right. right. Well, Roy. Those things happen. Those things happen. That is a thing that happens. All it right. finally came up, the somatic check and a grapple. We yeah. knew it. One day. Uh, so let's bring that sword down on this thing, and I'm at moderate curse now. That's a minus three. I'll take that 19. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably hit it. I think I probably hit you it. You might. You might. It's AC is not great. You might crit it. Let's see here. That's going to be a... Uh, 48 frightened and flanked. 48 will crit it. Ooh, ooh, when frightened got and flanked, there. it wouldn't if you didn't have debuffs. All right, so I get an extra weapon damage die. Is weapon surge? Yeah, that's weapon surge. And it's, it's cold. critical. And I'm the only one who's not frightened. Here. It's easy I'm the only one who's not in. frightened, yeah. All right, well, let's see how this goes. That went about average. Uh, it's, it's, it's about, yeah, it's disappointingly average, but I'll take it. Uh, so 20, 21, plus 8, 29, doubled, 58. Is any of that cold? None of that's cold. No, that was the one-time spell. Oh. So you land this strike on the thing, and this time as you crunch down on the forehead of this thing, uh, it... Its whole head almost sinks a little bit compared to its body, and uh, it crunches down its four legs into the sand. Its legs covered uh, all the way up to its body in almost thorn-like spines. Uh, but it had, but the tip of the end with claws, and it kind of grips and kind of sort of steadies itself, almost raising its butt in the air in front of Marshall as we're seeing strikes down on it. Do you have, I have no concept of how many actions that takes. Do you have any actions uh, I have left? two actions left. Okay. Because weapon surge costs one. Is that flirting with Marshall? Weapon surge, grip, strike. Oh, I guess changing my grip is, is, is Yeah, you can, you can discard the shield, I'll use it for you, but adjust grip is, is okay. you so got have, one left. You got I have one left. One action left. Um, Anything good I can do with that? Um, I can Hit totally it. smack it again. I think just I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to smack it again. Take a page out of Marshall's book. Just smack it again. Uh, it's a 17. Okay, pretty good. So that goes to a 12. Uh, goes to if uh, that crit before, then that's going to be seven lower because you you rolled two lower yeah. and minus five. That'll hit. Nice. It was a crit previously, Woo! so it's definitely still going to hit. So don't get Quick the math. weapon surge. I don't know what it just means. It's way easier to do math relative to the previous roll for me than it is to do it all from scratch again. But to each his own. I wow. Ooh, that's a chunky roll. Whoa. That's a chunky roll. Uh, this lad has 34. 77 health left. Is it 77 chunky? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not Marshall. Okay, fair enough. Yes. <laughs> Although you're trying to be, apparently. 30, 34, <laughs> 34, and 8, 42. That's pretty good. That's not all of it, but that's a solid chunk. In other words, um, hit it one more time. Got it. And crippling this thing, and uh, you can see that everybody at the back, the panic has broke out amongst the caravan as Resume rushes forward. Uh, the handler in control of the horses and the camels is doing his absolute best to keep the animals in check. Well, several of the other uh, caravan hands come around to try to help him stop any of the stock Ooh. from bolting. Uh, the first wagon of flame, nobody has got the balls to run up to try and do anything about that. They're, uh, the, all of the hands of this wagon are fleeing back near or behind the third wagon here. Now uh, a decent distance away from this battle, Trishik. So. Would you uh, like a hero point, Marshall? Because big dwarfs need to hero It was yelled out that there's another wall Thank of you. force. I obviously was not told exactly where it is, but I know I can climb those. I don't think you can. It's, a, it's wall. a sheer wall of force. There's like nothing you can. It's, it's like a window. Like yeah, I have suction oh. cup toes. You have suction cup toes. You can climb those. I have gecko grip. That's right. You have gecko grip. You, you, you can. He's if a you got gecko grip. You can climb those. He's a lizard. So I will uh, spin two actions. Action finding it. Uh, you have one to get over to it. Another one to get up to the top. 15 foot crawl <laughs> speed with fleet gives me 20. So that gets me up to the top because I assume they're 20 feet tall. I think they're 20 feet tall, yeah. And oh, 20 would, feet high. When you would feel the, the top of it, so you're just kind of clinging. Just hop to the other side. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to shoot him. Not not hop down. Like He's still up there. He's like clinging. But so, so I'm on this him side and of the wall. He, he's on the wall. And uh, I'm going to shoot the beetle that's currently in relatively dire straits. Prime target. Touchy. Climbing, one plus one left, yeah. And Actually, two left, because climb would be a stride, because you have... No, climbing's never a stride, so it'll be one plus one left. Climb for me is part of my movement. You have a movement speed, but it's not a stride. It's a... That doesn't make it a stride, I don't think. 
Uh, but you're gonna shoot I, twice I got anyway. Two no, the it doesn't wall. matter. You're gonna shoot him twice. I climbed right? up the wall. Well, if brother, it's two or I'm one. Gonna shoot one him. I think is irrelevant. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot him once, see what happens, and then I might use my other action to shoot the other one. Which yeah, well, is why this I... shot makes it one action left anyway, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Roll twice. Yep. So you have the first roll. one was an eight. That's a 19. I'll take the 19. I would, I would be disappointed if you didn't. Take the I would also kind of question your so intelligence a little bit. That's going to become a 48. Well, critically hit. I think that thing is... Uh, sure that one dead. might take that one down. I think that one's chop suey at this point. Well, it's taking permanent flat-footed. I think and, you just uh, roll the dice and it's going to die. It's 2d6 sneak. If it survives. If it survives. It's not surviving. So It's probably not it's surviving. It's taking a fire. I anymore. see a couple sixes in there. 20. Oh, you took uh, 11. Four. That's what I rolled for you. Minus your fire resistance. 31. 62. It's super dead. And it's pinned in place forever. You shoot an arrow from up here, and the group you see Trashik up on the wall, and he looses this arrow from his bow. Uh, and it shoots through critically into one of like these these two main almost exhaust vents like miniature volcanoes this thing has growing out of its side and as it hits in the thing lets go of Roshin rears back and explodes yeah. everybody oh. but Resme make me a reflex save I Res, love being like, two behind feet of the sand wall <laughs> oh, it's, like, <laughs> it's like five feet Thanks. of sand I'm five I'll give you one now. degree of success better okay. but you're making me a reflex save Ooh, we behind the that. wall is the best, guys. How did you get behind the wall? I'm immediately using this uh, hero point. I got a 42. Thanks for well, obvious reasons. So if I'm under the ground, I'll roll Way better for reflex saves. Hold a 42. 42. Did you do the one 42 one. will succeed, so you'll critically succeed. So yeah, you're okay. You're in a, like a class ah. tomb as all the, uh, the sand above you crystallizes. The good news is both of those were probably critical failures. Uh, Roisin? Yeah, so uh, Roisin rolls a nat 20, <laughs> so she's gonna take the corpse of this thing and smash it down so it explodes away from her and probably full force into Marshall, I'm betting from the look on your face. <laughs> Marshall, are you good? Well, just so everyone knows, I rolled a six, used the hero point, and rolled into a one. You're still frightened for me too, so it's just the bad times, really. Uh, Marshall's not gonna, having a good day. You're gonna take, you're gonna, you're gonna take a, lot, a lot of fire damage. Uh, what about you, Trishik? I'm a rogue. But what'd you get though? It's actually pretty NDC. I rolled a 14, so I have oh, a 44. Fine. 14, 44, you're still frightened one. Yeah, you're, 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 you're actually just barely succeeds, so but it does succeed. But I'm a rogue, so it's fine. So, literally only Marsh. This thing just blows up in Marshall's face. You know what, this is like the other fight, but for Marshall. Where is she? Yeah. Look, this, this is the alchemical like. golem backwards. <laughs> this is what it looks like. See? Uh, the film. Except uh, it was triggered by him. Oh, this is fascinating. Yeah. Look at this go. Isn't it nice and when I you're not the one on fire? The you just marriage? see your little... Because you're a terrible from person. From the glass <laughs> on the ground now. It's better than it's... see Raz on the... <laughs> hold on, hold on. I don't have enough dice for this. <laughs> Are you... Oh, sorry. I'll pick you up. You'll be fine. You'll be, You'll be fine. fine. You take uh, 148 points of fire damage. Oh, you're not even down. Minus oh. whatever your resistance yeah, is. You go down you said like 148. 148. You're, just, right, so... you're just maimed. You go down like one fight every session, so it's okay. <laughs> it's, it just, just blows up in Marshall's face. I mean, I'm takes, still up. He takes... <laughs> All of it. I'm not happy, but I'm up. <laughs> I shot a flaming arrow into a gas tank while you were looking at it. You literally just detonated it. As a this gas happens, tank, you literally see Marshall it. just, Mega Marshall, slowly turn towards you. Really? You actually have really? one action left. By the still. time you turn around and look, I've already gone. <laughs> Here's the thing the Marshall, Marshall knows True Chic well enough to go, he's there somewhere. I don't know where, but he's there somewhere. You got one action left, too. This is just, I'm he gonna blew sneak up. Back to the other side of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful where you sleep at night. All right, well. Invisible. It's a log with his face painted on it, so I'll still know. eat it. How much damage did the walls take? This. Their hardness is like 30. 430. So yeah. I don't know if What's this affects actual, the clone. Their hardness 30 and how much health? 60. That would half destroy both walls, actually. Uh, actually, the one in front of the wagons would be destroyed at this point after okay. taking... Two breath attacks plus the explosion. Hmm. That one's actually gone. That oh, would, that's actually really convenient for me right now. That would destroy the one in front of Resume. The one separating the remaining Zatani spawn from the party is still there, uh, oh, but no, you would, would see would like very that. fine, almost just like floating cracks in the air. Is that is a, a pretty large hit? It was like seventy. Good time. Seventy-four damage was the was that the normal damage that doubled, so seventy-four. So it took like forty. So it blew two thirds of the health of that thing out. 
So, a clarification. I realize I didn't spend the concentrate to maintain it this turn anyway, so the clone's gone. But I rolled a hard one for the deception, so that would mean that anyone who had observed it immediately knows it's fake. Okay, your log just falls over. You were in a hurry. Yeah. That's I like, think the log <laughs> is very on fire right now. <laughs> the log is just sitting there. <laughs> gotta go, I was going to go to the ninja log. shop. Uh, <laughs> so this Tatani spawn in the back uh, is going to reach for Marshall, and immediately its claws are going to find this wall. Uh, and then seeing it kind of crack and shatter, it's just going to slam its head into it. Uh, it's got 30 hardness. Whee. AC 10. It doesn't take crits. It doesn't though. take crits, it so it takes it. Uh, but slamming its head into it is going to have absolutely no effect whatsoever. Bonk, um, squish. So the thing screeches, and then almost like, like a penguin diving into the water, puts its head down and shoots down into the sand. Out of sight. Oh, the farmer said it could do this. <laughs> Marshall. Hey, you know who's underground right now? <laughs> oh, jeez. You know who's about to not be underground right now? <laughs> Hold on, where are you? Because I have where it's going. <laughs> oh, it actually goes to red. It's just going straight east to get the Marshall. Wow, so you, this is oh, the bad is times. Horrible. Rez, you're underground. And you go to dig up, and your claws just start scratching <laughs> on glass <laughs> as the surface is fused. Was the good thing I was going to say when it came to your turn is it's not bro anymore because it's like a, a six-inch sheet, thick sheet of glass above you. And you hear kind of the ground rumbling, and you just see fire and mandibles and fangs <gasps> as this thing actually is literally next to you. <laughs> Ten feet underground, it's coming up underneath. And as it comes into you... It's just gonna munch! It's at minus five because I have buttered a wall of force. You have that going for you, which is nice. Wow! Wow. I don't even consider that it could run into Raz underground. I was like, it's not gonna get What are you doing side. here? Hey, buddy. Hey, neighbor. And uh, in a state of confusion for a brief moment, <laughs> it, uh, it opens We're all its jaws, confused. sucks in a bunch of sand, which you see like immediately just being smitten to embers inside of its maw and just tries to pretty much swallow the whole land. I can't see the same at all. You hear I think we just see glowing coming from the patch of sand How's that's that, glass that now. That, 20? So that was a 20. Yeah, that was a 20. I, I was about tell. to say, if I could see it, the rat has been swallowed. It is 10 feet underground, okay, so it comes up a diagonally adjacent to Raz as it was going to sit. It like swallowed him by accident. It didn't even know he was there. It's literally not on purpose. It's just digging and just. <laughs> spit the rat out. Just Wait, spit it out. The rat just spit it out. Might 1v1 and kill it with suffocation. <laughs> Does anyone know the Heimlich maneuver? It depends on if it kills We have him to off. save its life to get you out of it. Because it critted me. You take 58 points of piercing damage. It does not have the action left to actually grab you. It is literally just confused. It bites down. It You're in its mouth. And you were you there. burst into flames. <laughs> but, but it's not physically grabbing you because it's out of action. Uh, Marshall. You just hear a rat. Wow. You just say the same like, Wow. <laughs> you the hear glass a kind of crack. Jesus. You hear a Marshall is just oh. confused. But at the same time, he kind of he kind of knows he's not exactly in the best situation to do anything he's also about extremely it. Extremely on fire. Or <laughs> also, I, I'm fully aware because it is not Marshall's so day. So it's been a minute since persistent damage. You can take two actions to do something that would logically you're just on fire. Like I mean, stop, drop, and roll comes to mind to get a free attempt to put it out, and it's oh. DC 10 instead of 15. If you want these two actions to try to put the fire out, it's it's a 50-50 instead of a one. Oh, in that case, you just see. Well, unfortunately, you're in front of me. You just see Marshall Cole. As he's attempting to stop dropping. Timber. <laughs> he's like doing weird push ups and <laughs> kind of digging his elbows in. Just Are you kidding me? I'm not using this dice anymore. Still on fire. Yeah, actually, uh, instead, he's trying to use the L to put it out. Yeah, he doesn't really. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs his brandy by mistake and it just. We <laughs> have one plus one so, actions left. Good news that doesn't prevent your flat check at the end of the day. Yeah, you still get the check at the end, but you take the damage first. Uh. I guess I'll psych up because I need all the hit points I can get. Give myself 13 more temp hit points. Yay. And then... Um, how, how bad could the persistent damage possibly be? I don't know, dude. You have resistance. I mean, I do. You can't be that bad. Your resistance seven? Eight. Eight. Eight? You take 18 fire damage after your resistance. So that would... Okay, so... You take five... You psych up would invalidate most. You would be taking five... 
I mean, I, 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 as far as my bonus action, I literally can't do much. Yeah, not really. The, I mean, the, the haste doesn't help you when you're on fire and panicking and there's no one to punch. All right, I'll just make my DC you check can then. Yell. I can yell at nothing. <laughs> Give me the, the flat check. Still on fire, Raz. <laughs> Raz. Don't worry, Raz's situation is dramatically worse than yours <laughs> right now. They'll never find me down here. Oh. Hi. Hi. You are going? in an antlion pit, except it's not just underground, it is sealed under a glass tomb. Spirit song. With him right adjacent to me. <laughs> it's not gonna go up and hit anyone else. He's just literally right there in the yeah, blast. Just blowing his in the ground. It doesn't have a tag of opportunity. Uh, so, what's the save? Fortitude. Run? Fortitude? Yeah. <sighs> it's a rough one. It's my one fortitude save. Today's a good day to be as a tiny spot. <laughs> 44. It doesn't critically succeed. It does not critically succeed, so it takes half the half the damage of 18d6. So I'm going to roll 9d6. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot. It's force too, right? Isn't it just force damage? Um, this yes, is the one that, yeah. it is just force damage. So this, that's a pretty solid spell right there. Can I get five more d6, please? One. And then I'm going to dig away 15 feet in a direction. Oh, thank you. Just go back the way you came. It does back. Right. I roll a lot of d6s a lot of times. Um, I'm going to go back the way I came. <laughs> You're going to see Raz pop up next to Resume. He's right there. And you then, see Raz pop up with a gout of fire <laughs> shoot up after him. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go behind that first wagon with the rest of my movement. I'm a free move. Fair enough. <laughs> when I see you pop out, I'm gonna yell out, Raz, perhaps you'd like to be up here. <laughs> you One, pop two, out very on fire. 30, 36. 36 damage, okay. And then, uh, thank you, sir. You take. Oh, I'm on fire again. 21 points of fire damage for the persistent. He oh. put you in his mouth. You're on fire. Okay. The inside of him is very hot. I rolled a 17. Hey. You guys are really good at putting the fire out. As, um, as he yeah, pops out, he just rolls on the ground and keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> How much was it? 27? So 17. It was, uh, I, I like to like think like 21. his, his 21. entry hole, like just fire spurts out of it, then it goes away, and then a rat flies <laughs> out. Ah! <laughs> 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 Panic skin. Like, rest me. Um... Raz is not having a good Did day. Did you pop up right not... next to her? Huh? I you just dug down. You absolutely can see this thing in the hole. <laughs> look at look at it. You can see it down there. It's, it's like 10 feet, 15 diagonal adjacent from you underground. Um, Resme is going to think for a second and go, Ah. Uh, vision. And uh, her, a light will fly from her eyes and into the ground, and it will ignite this thing, uh, but not in the way you think. Give me a will save. Willis save us. That's not a good save that it has. I know, right? 37. Uh, that's going to, uh, it has to meet, right? Meet. Succeed. That's gonna succeed, but that yeah, just means it's, right that just means it's gonna be active for one minute. Um, it is now a beacon. Everyone knows exactly where it is. Oh, this is that thing. Yeah. yeah. So you uh, can, you all on the surface now can see about 10 feet under you. You can see clearly, clearly. like highlighted wall hack style, oh. the outline hmm. of this thing scuttling through the ground. And you can track it. Distance doesn't matter. Um, it's concealed to you because it's underground, right. but you can still hit it. Well, if you can get to the intermediate you 10 feet of sand, theoretically you can hit it. You have uh, one plus one actions left. Um, to give them a better shot, she's going to say, Hexum, and give them true sight again uh, to give them a roll f twice on their first hit. And uh, then And that she, ignores concealment, too, on the first does. hit. It does. And then she's going to move the hell back. <laughs> no, like <laughs> run away. And, I mean, she's a f ball of flame, so she doesn't care as much, but it still has mandibles, it's and those still, aren't fun. Raz looks pretty bloody. Um, Roshin, uh, are you on fire? You're on fire. I'm not on fire. You're fire with I rolled a 20. Right. You guys keep and then it exploded 20. and I hid behind like the one piece That's of right. its carapace. You're okay. I'm okay. I mean, I marshaled Relatively. way worse. Um, well, so, speaking, we're okay. I know where it is. I ignore its concealment. And I get to roll twice on, on the die when I hit it. 
Is there anything about that that lets me ignore the 10 feet of sand between me and it? None of those things let you ignore the 10 feet of sand and the, 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 the nine and a half feet of sand and the six inches of solid glass between you and it. Gotcha. All right. So, Raz is... Way back there. <sighs> Raz ran. Raz five ran feet for his further life. away than I would like him to be. <laughs> Raz ran for his life. All right. He's hiding behind the on-fire wagon. Oh, just dive into the hole. Be a... Be, be there's a, no hole on... Oh, there's a hole. <laughs> be, I mean, be a woman. Be a hero. <laughs> dive into the rat-sized hole. Just, just thrust your sword and face in the hole. Um, so, Roisin... Uh, let's see here. So, she's going to stride up with her hasted action uh, to get between... Uh, to basically be between the hole and Marshall. Um, Isn't there still a wall of force there? No. That one got blasted by the explosion. Out. Um, as she moves past Marshall, book up there, Marshall, so scurried, and she'll touch herself and Marshall with two hands, um, and the, um, uh, that's moment of renewal. So you're going to get back your con times your level times two, your con bonus times your level times two. So in health. So 340? You are level 16, your con's a five. Five. So that's going to be 80 times 2. You're going to get 160 Wait, health back. Con times your level. Con times your level. I was so 160, you 160, You're going to get back 160. I, had an I will take it. There. I'm going to get back. Now, Rez. Slightly less. You're sheltering behind the uh, splintered remains oh, of this wagon like as the explosion of the Zidani spawn that destroyed the Wall of Force has obliterated the front of this wagon. The back of it charred, but still, you know, standing tall enough. It's basically the back half of a wagon at this point. And this has got some licking embers at the wagon behind it because the wall of force blunted most of the explosion. But there is just bananas everywhere. They're just the, the battlefield has a very sweet smell from the literal tons of baked bananas that have been blasted across the sand. I do like baked bananas. Shield spell. Pink. Now the chic. Bananas have a much longer shelf life. I'm gonna go poke it. <laughs> okay. I know you are. How? I'm gonna follow the tunnel it made. You gonna? Okay, so you. I'm down. on the far side of the wall. You gotta I'm gonna get, let go, go over it. Yeah, I'm gonna let go to fall 20 feet. He's already on action. that side of the wall. Yeah. Then I'm gonna hasted movement. That's two 30 action. feet. To the hole. Just the hole, not like right beside me. The holes. No, the holes. The holes not, like not all the way literally... over here. No. The one it made. Where the bug came from. Oh, there's not like the thing is so large it just kind of exploded and the d sand l largely fell back down and it's like oh, a bit of a crater. Oh. There's only the only solid hole is one Raz made. I'm gonna go poke it. The it's two just actions, gonna take me two actions. Two to actions get to get to the hole, and you're not sneaking, you're just going. So oh, I can sneak at full speed. That's true. Dude, you cannot possibly squeeze and sneak into a hole. You? Yes, I can. You can't I have squeeze and squeeze. He has oh my squeeze. god. <laughs> We've already got over this. <laughs> my All body, the mobility. My body can fit in a Holy hole the size crap. of my head. I okay. So, so only, you... only only Raz's hole is still there, right? Yes. Okay. So you moment of renewal with Marshall, the two of you are healing and she just <laughs> <laughs> I don't even see him. You don't, you just see the hole. You're too busy. You just see like... sand kick up in the Yeah, you weird just see pattern. sand on the hole a little bit and Trishik. With two actions left, shoves his face down in the <laughs> hole. <laughs> Can I hit it? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm gonna hit it. What the Roll hell? Roll twice. Number one is and a nine. You, it and somehow can't see you, filling the entire yep. hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I rolled a 16. It doesn't notice there's a lizard there now. So. 45 to its flat-footed, and if this one was frightened. This one was not frightened. 45 will hit. All right. Uh, it's going to be <laughs> taking... Self! <laughs> Self build. Yay! <laughs> what? It's going to take an additional 2d6 <laughs> sneak attack damage, and it's flat-footed until is, the end of its next this turn. This is the dumbest thing that's ever happened. Yo, no, it's not. Is, <laughs> yes, it is. It's in the top three. This is the dumbest thing that's ever happened I was about to say, it's top three. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 18, 22, 24, 30, to 43, and then I'm going to sneak away. <laughs> As you stab him, you shove your claws like right into the plate of its forehead. I just come down, poke it, and a leave. A gout of this magma blood shoots out. I mean, a reflex save. I'm going to roll one someday. Stupid idiot. 
Uh, well, that's a 37. I hate you. Wait! Oh, it's exactly the DC. <laughs> if I succeed, I critically oh, succeed. Okay. I'm I mean, gonna sneak away. Just doing rogue things. Oh, I'm gonna hole. head, uh... Away. <laughs> Out of the hole? Yeah, and, uh... Are you gonna to the east. You're pulling a free willy. Just jump he right just out of the hole. He just ran down there and just ran down the hole. Just got the giant you. hand hey, slap. Hey, do you know the video of the monkey slapping the lion and then running away? <laughs> <laughs> it's what I just did. That's amazing. The lizard you, smacks you the beetle. You squeeze at full speed, right? I have to check, but I this, definitely can fit in that hole. It's only like a ten foot hole, so it's right. fine. This thing I was wondering like where you how far you could get. This thing is going crazy. to uh it would end up a, a five feet further north and east. Uh which would end up yeah, pretty much right next to Roshin and Jay's the hole as it bursts up, smashing <laughs> through the literal glass ceiling to an axe in the face. Um, <laughs> you're still frightened too, no, I think, at this point. I rolled a but, one, so it doesn't matter. But he swings it. He's very focused on getting healed. He swings it down. This thing explodes out of the ground, kind of in the middle of everyone, not that it sees Kashyyyk or anything. Um, and it's going to turn and... Yeah, that's right. What you gonna do about it? I was gonna literally 50-50 which one of you guys is gonna bite. It's like a total toss-up because it's the giant on fire guy or the lady that's immediately in front of it. Um, it's gonna be the lady that's immediately in front of it. Yay! It and as he goes for the snaps... <laughs> it's... Profound confusion <laughs> on uh, what has happened here what just hit this me? day. Uh, just a, a, a spiteful rage. It snaps once as it's emerging and then kind of twists its head and bites down almost sideways. Mandibles coming down toward your pauldron. That was not better. Uh, and it is just an absolute fit of confusion. It is going to, it's a natural one. It is going to just completely miss. <laughs> Scraping um, on the runes of the shield. Why yeah. do people see me underground? <laughs> and then just slam a big clawed foreleg down towards you. It's slap. Doesn't like you. That's not going to do it either. That's going to be a 33. 33, yeah, those, those runes, shield runes, so yeah, bend no. it off. Mm. Um, it's very confusion upset. Marshall. I'm going to spook it. Rawr. Just normal intimidate. Mm. All right. Because I, I could at least do yeah. that. You haven't attempted it. Yeah, we haven't tried this one yet. Yeah, that's true. You are. What do you have? Fright, are you frightened okay. two these days? Uh, 36. That'll succeed. He's frightened. That's all that matters. He's a and, scarred. And he's still true strike for me, right? Yep. Yep, he's that's, true strike. So you can, yeah, roll yeah. twice. Yeah, he's a glowing beacon. You can all see exactly where he is. Uh, rawr. Nothing conceals him. That one jumped out of the tray, so I'm going to lose it. again. I will take hey. the 18. So with a minus two, because I'm still frightened too, that is going to be a 46. 46 will hit. This one's actually taken a lot of damage. I did not think this one had hit that much, but this one's Ooh. actually been smacked Ooh. around. Well, I heard uh, that's, you uh, like damage. Uh, that is some, I, I see a 12, 11, a nine. Wow. Okay, so see. that's a 23 plus nine, so that's. 32 plus 6 sound damage. 38. 38 plus 25. 63. Yeah. I can uh, math. Math is hard for me. Oh, it took me a sec. Yeah. And as you smash it with this glorious head, the reverberation causing a bigger impact than it normally would, and a massive gout of blood inexplicably shooting over Roshin and uh, <laughs> hitting exclusively Marshall, maybe <laughs> Of course. He got his reaction back. Because that's how it works. Uh, and I'm, it doesn't stack, so. And it's not an attack, so I can't get down, Mr. No. President. Uh, d d 36. It's frightened one, which makes that succeed. Hey! Oh, it's DC 37. One. You're only Foul the here. amount of on fire that you already were. You have uh, two actions left. <laughs> when in doubt, might as well. Oh, come up, my boy. Reason not to. That was a five on the die. That's well, not gonna work. Twenties are there. Fish, You're fish. hitting him. I'm fishing. fishing it. That was a fifteen on the die, which makes this it makes it a five. Yeah. Makes yeah. it a five, so that's not gonna do anything. Yeah, that was frightening. And then I gotta make my DC for my flare stuff. 
got to be a 15 yeah. or higher, right? 15 or higher. You take 23 minus your 8, so you're going to take 15. Damn it! You take 15 and you're still on fire. <sighs> Such is life. He burns like coals, <laughs> long and high. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a fire giant. The fire takes to you. You burn very well. That's not <laughs> this way. This is not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> oh, is that charcoal baguettes? Right. <laughs> He just glares at you. Yeah, that thing actually looks pretty injured. It's actually been hit a lot more than I thought it had. Raz, Raz, so, Raz. No, Raz. absolutely not. Raz is gonna do anything. <laughs> Half. He's just gonna do something I like. Go up and punch it. We Raz, got just this. whip. La la, in Cynthia. I'm gonna cast Anastasia on it. Yeah. <laughs> Make me a will save, please. Crap! It's frightened one. Uh, that's not gonna get better than that. Uh, 34? It fails. Oh no. <laughs> this, we could leave. We could just leave. <laughs> well, it's going to thrash wildly and erratically, and it's big enough and can spit lava enough. That's still probably really threatening. But you see it almost, as Marshall hits it and it spews back, it pauses for a minute. It like freezes in place, it shudders slightly, and cocks its head, and, like looks around like it doesn't even know where it is. And pulls up a claw like the sand doesn't feel right. <laughs> it's clearly distressed. It feels as if each molecule, each grain of sand is just licking the bottom of its claws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one left. <laughs> um, Why you like this? I'm going to just it's closing three. <laughs> you, you just hear. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> as like Raz is out of ideas, he's still kind of huffing and puffing as I'd inspire courage. We don't have a martial token anymore. It's just fire. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> You're doing great. Know. You have your plus one. Do you want, would you like to stride or strike, sir? <laughs> I'm going to stride further away from it. I'm just going to... You know what's about to happen. You saw it happen I'm once. just going to come all the way You know what's <laughs> about to happen. And you rolled into the sand. You're not on fire somehow. Resume. Oh, okay. girl. I didn't save the rest of... The wagons. Oh no, I forgot the objective. <laughs> oh no! You had one job. This man did not. Resume might be able to save the rest TPL. of the wagons. Resume. Um, how on fire are the rest of the wagons? The first wagon is unsalvageable. Uh, the damage that rippled through after the first explosion has destroyed most of the cargo. The second wagon is just kind of catching on the front. Third wagon's okay, and they have the, the, the animals that have gotten a decent distance, but seem to be largely under control. They're at a safe distance at this point. Um, Resme is going to, uh, call up uh, a snowstorm and blast it out at the fire, just trying to hit the top of it, trying to put the ice out without hitting too much of the cart. Cause she can fly. So I can hit it at whatever angle I want. Oh. Because- You can fly up, you want to fly up five feet, it's yeah. cold? Yeah. You can fly up five feet and just shoot it out level right over Roshan. That is exactly what Bonus, I want. Bonus, it also hits the Zatani spot. Yeah, that was my um, plan. Who is clumsy three. <laughs> Give me that reflex save, baby. He's about to learn what cold tastes like. His reflex save is better than you think it is. But he's it's also right. three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's split that with the whole lot. 32. Yeah. That's a fail. That's uh, not when I roll a six. It's not. <laughs> we. So, so We're going to need to replace that with fire here in about two seconds. I swear, if this thing explodes on me again, it's absolutely It's crazy. going Boy, to explode do I have on some all news of for us. You. <laughs> we had best just get used to the idea. I'm going to preemptively roll a reflex save. That's going to be a 42 cold damage. So as you shoot through this thing, raving and confused and on fire, you see this fla flash of ice, this massive blast, put out the fires on the first wagon and coat the Zotani spawn. Uh, it actually quenches the fire that you can see through these uh, these crevices, these almost volcanic geysers it has across its carapace. And the thing is covered by a white sheen of frost as it kind of lists the one side. <laughs> Unfortunately, that makes its shell very brittle. That is followed up immediately by a massive explosion as the dying creature, perhaps mercifully for synesthesia, <laughs> is put out of its misery and frickin' explodes. Resme's immune to fire. Rez got out of danger close. The other three of you, I need a reflex save. 41. Um, I failed. That's all you need. 41, to you're good. So it's still frightened once so the DC is actually one lower. It was too scared to explode correctly. <laughs> <laughs> 
machine. Divine Aegis. Is it a um? A, is it a divine effect? No. No. Okay, great. I get plus one. It is just fire. It's just fire. Uh, it's a five. It's not divine it's anymore. Gonna hurt. Um. So that's gonna be a thirty-one. Fails, Marshall. I'm just going to tell you it incredibly failed. It's because not... I'm frightened and clumsy. You only frightened one at this point. You're mostly okay, right? Frightened like, and clumsy don't stack. I rolled stack. a three. Frightened and clumsy don't stack. I you rolled a... a three and you've frightened. You've... How bad is your reflex? You only had a minus one. I mean, it's a 25. Oh, two, because you're clumsy too. That's right. Yep. Yeah, you critically fell. Uh, yep. That's that's why I don't, don't even bother. How much health you got? Well, thanks to Roshin, two hundred and thirty-three. Yeah, you're yeah, probably gonna be okay. You're gonna but be it's like still that gonna hurt. explosion in your face thing that we got going on for sure. Um, let's see, that was not a great roll. That's okay. I got two more. Eight. Oh, the last one was pretty freaking spicy. Is it more than two hundred and thirty-three? No. Okay, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. I'm curious though. I'm curious. Sheer morbid curiosity. You take 160 fire damage. You take 80 oh. fire damage. Okay. The first cart is deleted from reality. <laughs> um, and the goods of the second cart are obliterated throughout the sands. So the smell of sweet baked fruit mixed with the sulfur of this thing's body fills the air. She obviously critically succeeded and it's fine. But. An explosion happened? As this thing explodes, there's almost no remnants of the Zotani spawn left, just legs and bits of kite and spikes scattered around throughout the sand. An area 30 feet around from this encounter now, just a layer of rough glass in every direction. But danger appears to have passed. Or has it? Pulled out my decanter in this water. A third Zotani spawn comes out of the sand. <laughs> Wanna, you mind um, someone I put me out, please? I pull out my decanter <laughs> in this water and do the uh, maximum volume. Let's point it straight up what? to make it rain. Let's try. Let's let let's to quench as much as the fire sand. as possible. <laughs> we actually on and I do turns, aim it at Marshall. Spend two actions to try to put Marshall check. out. Yeah, realistically, Who at down, this point, so it's more manageable. As he yeah, as he explo uh, this explodes and Marshall comes back down to a reasonable size. He gets uh, with you the would hose. you would be able to put him out. I'm, I'm going to uh, make sure the third you, card is okay. It becomes much more clear what is regular fire <laughs> versus Marshall's ember beard as the rage extinguishes. It's all regular fire and should probably be gone. He just gets blasted with a fire hose. Out, but, of, out of spite, Marshall is collecting what remains of the spikes from this thing. And he's like, go, 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 go. I still hate it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, you did great, great Marshall. You did great. I'm just going to attach these to my armor later. Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Oh, but, I think I chipped a nail. These do seem to have been as far as you can tell but like if the legends are true they're either a tanny spawn or almost certainly whatever being spawned the legend in the first place i didn't stop to ask terrifying monsters that they may be they are now uh tiny bits of armor plating and dust now and hopefully this route will be one that is safe for the farmers you need to use going forward you you know, part of it, one of the wagons will make it there. I have a lot of vegetables in the bag of holding. We the could... <laughs> livestock will make it there. It will be crippled. There will be losses. But other than a few of the draft animals who save the lives of all the farmers. Yeah, the and there'll be members. some heck of good stories. They got, yeah, they got some tales to tell. <laughs> Boy, if you guys thought you were legends in Catapest <laughs> before. <laughs> I'm going to no, go ahead yeah. and take my list of guilds you've swayed and just go ahead and check farmers union off oh i'm checking mine off too at this point with these defeated the caravan master says okay you know what maybe we'll camp <laughs> we're still several hours from katapesh and we it's gonna take us a minute to salvage oh, what man. we can sorry i only saved one wagon. watching you guys fight it turns out <laughs> we'll still Is be resting for the nights and when we come back Next week, everybody will be returning to Katapesh in the late morning of the following star day. 
Gloriously victorious. And Slightly s- barbecued. Slightly. Slightly. Only one of us. Just now singed. Still four untouched. Four of the guilds. We did our job. Here to support us. Hey. Thank you for hanging out, everybody. Yeah, we did pretty good. Maybe we're sticking with us a little past our normal call time there, but this was a hilarious freaking encounter. That, that was, was amazing. Way <laughs> I thought it was going to be. Jeez, dude. That Appreciate was... y'all being here. Of course, thanks to all our partners. Sirenscape, Paizo, Norse Foundry, Ark and Forge. Uh, I mean, we don't have like a big partnership with them or anything, they did, but they gave us the software to use. And boy, today was a fantastic highlight of why running a game on Ark and Forge is awesome. Yep. Running a game on the map making software lets you do a lot of things in the middle of play. We will see you all next week, everybody. Victorious! Barbecue yeah. rat! Good night. Good night. <laughs>